Dude, I'm so bored. What do you want to do today? Well, you know what they say about two young men left alone in a room together. They play D&D! &D. Dude, let's play it! Yeah! Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first episode of the Dude Let's Play It podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Ben! Whoa! 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 The Dude Let's Play It gang is finally OMG. Back. The boys are back in town. The band is back together. Hell yeah, man. Time for the reunion tour. We're going to hit like all the small stadiums and all the small towns. That way we don't attract a big crowd. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. I've never been to a concert. Damn. I mean, it's okay. I don't like going to concerts. I don't like crowds. I don't like <laughs> concerts either. I just, like, I used to work with a guy over uh, in the game store, right? Mm -hmm. I used to work at a game store for folks who don't know that. Uh, so the guy was telling me, like, yeah, you just go to, like, a, a metal concert or something. You get high, and you just fight people. <laughs> and I'm like, why would I do that? Yeah. It doesn't... I can just go and get high at home <laughs> and be safe. Like, Damn. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I so, yeah I don't I don't know I don't know about all that I don't know about about getting high at all I don't know about fighting people either Jeez, dude I mean that, like it, like I used to do judo right yeah yeah like that's one we, thing we used to do judo yeah together that's right you did do judo yeah remember we used to do judo we and we never got to face each other either well it's because I broke my shoulder <laughs> I broke oh my, I broke my collarbone yeah, yeah yeah I was in a sling for like six months damn. <laughs> Damn, that was crazy. Well, oh, man. I, I don't remember why I stopped. I think, no, I, I didn't do wrestling until like the two years later or something. So oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know what. I just stopped. I don't know. Who knows, man? It's all in the past. Today we focus on the future. The future. The future being a D and D campaign featuring the OG dude. Let's play it. Crew. Hell yeah. O M G. We got the cameras. We got the microphones. We got the we got the headsets. We have headsets this time. Like it's. Not, I can't believe we have headsets in you, this. Ladies and gentlemen, you have no idea. Okay, this is fun too. Talking into a camera, I can do that now. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we have headsets. Now, what would make this fun, right? Is if we had like a little microphone that shoots out through the side there, right? Yeah. That way, that way, we pretend we're like jet fighters or something like that. Like, <laughs> all right, this is Alpha One going in for a straight and run. Yeah. <laughs> I whenever I'm at the concerts, I always make like a bad joke that no one else understands, and it's like copy gold leader. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. I there, there's a few there's a few other Star Wars quotes that I'll make here and there, <laughs> but like no one ever catches them, and I'm, I'm waiting for the day that like because there's different like volunteers and stuff right, right. that that end up doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm always like waiting for the day. I'm like, someone please get it today. And it's just never happened. It's just disappointing, honestly. Like, we were talking to that one guy. What's his name? Joe? Joey. Joey? Yeah. So, like, he's a nerd. Why wouldn't he understand what Star Wars is? Like, I, maybe he maybe he understood, but maybe he was just like... He didn't want to encourage you? Yeah. He's, 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 he's like... He's got to uh, maintain his reputation. <laughs> he's like, this guy's drowning right now. Uh, it's not my place to save him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Well, I think that's pretty good for an opening. You want to get right into it? Then? Yeah, let's let's get right into All this right. this campaign. So, ladies and gentlemen, we this is episode one of our new D and D campaign featuring the Dude Let's Play It crew. I already said that, didn't I? Ah, whatever. <laughs> so, let's start off with just a quick introduction of your character. Okay. So, my character, his name is Salazar Spindle. Uh, he's a monk. Uh, he used to be a pirate. Used to be a pirate. Okay. And just so everybody knows, we've we've have played a campaign, multiple campaigns with mm -hmm. this same character before. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there there are probably going to be a lot of like inside jokes and whatnot. Just go along with it, you know. If you hear us laughing, just laugh with us. Yeah. Laughing is contagious. We'll 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 all enjoy uh, Salazar Spindle together. Oh yes, he is a he's a great zany character. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I always just think of the the Duff or the the buff, the Simpsons beer man. Oh, the the Duff beer man. Yes, I knew. Yeah. I I I thought it was Duff. I I don't. Yeah, know. it is Duff. Okay. I think the Kool Aid Man personally. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. So, so um, so let's shall we, here. Shall we jump right into it then? Let's do it. All right. Let's so, 
let's let's set the scene here for example so salazar has he's how old is salazar um i want to say that i put him as my age yeah, he's 25. Because in our old in our old things, I put him as my age. He was like 18 or 19 okay, or okay. something. So, so good old Salazar there. He's he's been around the block a couple of times. You know, not like super old, but like he's an adult. So he knows that, you know, you are living in a a world that is mostly inhabited by ocean. Okay. Uh, you live in a particular area of the world called the Ben Isles. Is a series of aisles kind of collected together. Yes, I call it the Ben Isles. Ben, I, I came up with the name when I was like twelve, and I just ran with it. The Ben so, Isles. The Ben Isles, spelled B E N apostrophe N. <laughs> yes. Nice. Yes. So the Ben Isles are just kind of a collection of relatively close, collected together islands. Uh, each island kind of has its own little mystery to it. It's got their own little settlements and adventures to be had. Sweet. Uh, in between them, it's like maybe a day's or two worth of travel by sea. Salazar, being a a former pirate turned uh, monk, he's he's been to a few of these islands, but some of them might still be a mystery to him. So let me reference my my little map here. In fact, I can show this to the world. That is a hand drawn map of the Ben Isles. There, <laughs> yes, looks so, good. Yeah. So you will be starting your adventure. Get where I had you going. I think. Where was it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think. So I think it was this small island. So you see at the top there, the small island underneath the one that says the Ben Village. Uh, the does it say Thun Thunder's nope. Bane? Up at the top of the uh, the map there. Kind of the center. Oh, it's it's the island that's next to the, that's like adjacent to Ben's village. Yeah, that small island right next to it there. So, yeah, see. that that map is kind of old, so I I gotta update it with the, uh, the actual. Where, right. Can you? Can right you there. It? It's hard to do it like reverse. Ah, I see. Gosh, but I'm still teeny, okay. teeny teeny tiny island. Um, right I I still gotta name the island and whatnot because, <laughs> whatever. It's like but. it's like the Philippines. I'm pretty sure the Philippines they have so many islands that there's like islands that are still like yet to be yeah named. Yeah. But um, on this particular tiny island is a village called the Port of Saint Royal. Nice. Yes. Um, so you have heard through your various adventures that the Port of Saint Royal uh, holds has been holding a festival in these past recent years. So the town itself is known for its crab fishing industry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, started up about maybe a decade or so ago, and it's been a booming industry ever since. And to celebrate, the town is putting on a fa- has started putting on a fancy festival in recent years. And you've heard that, oh, this festival's pretty happening, pretty popping, right? Mm-hmm. Attracts people from all over the local islands and whatnot. So yeah. should be a pretty nice crowd, should be a fun time. And you... Uh, you know, weary from your previous adventures, could use a, a nice a nice vacation. So you're making your way there. Um, we'll start you just a little ways outside of the town. So as you're making your way into the town, you're passing by, like, different campsites and what. You see one camp kind of has, like, you know, acrobats and jugglers and whatnot. Another one has, like, an acting trope or something like that. And then dotted amongst them and whatnot are just, like, regular tents and whatnot of just travelers who came for the festival and whatnot yeah so um as you're walking by you hear a couple of uh villagers kind of just talk to themselves and like oh did you hear about the did you hear about the cult that had in this town like oh yeah i did like they're kind of a funny line they're like worship crabs or something like that and they're kind of walking away and whatnot and then you see off uh kind of onto the side of a uh a road there's kind of like a message board right and uh, as you walk up to it, you notice there's a help wanted sign. Uh, any volunteers report to the mayor of the port of St. Royale. Okay. So I guess Salazar seeing this, mm-hmm. uh, I'll just start talking to Salazar. Um, you are Salazar. I, right, but I'm just going to. Oh, you're like talking to yourself. Well, yeah, like I'm just saying, like I'm going to start oh, oh, okay, speaking okay. as like. Okay, okay. Hmm. This is interesting. Maybe I'll, I'll look into this and see if I can get some some 
gold coinage out of all this. So you make your way to the town? Sorry, I'm yep. trying to unlock my phone here. Yep. Okay, so, uh, and I assume you, you're interested in the, the job there? The yes, job? I am interested in the job. Okay. I'm interested in anything uh, that'll make me some cash. Give it a bit of... R that, right now. Coinage. Yeah. Okay. I'm a little bit low on funds. I only have 10 gold coins. Fair enough. So as you, you're you making your way towards the town, it's it's not like a particularly big town, but it's not really small either. Yeah. And you notice kind of on the periphery of the town, they're kind of like setting up new buildings and whatnot that are still in, under construction. So like it's it's going pretty good in this town economically wise. This crab industry has been doing pretty good for them. Yeah. And uh, you notice kind of in the like the center of town you see from like you're standing on like a hilltop or something like that you can see like oh there's like a village square or something and then you see a, a slightly taller building um that is probably a good indication that that's the the town hall where you might find the mayor okay so i guess um my character seeing this decides that he's gonna go towards the town hall to see if he can hall? learn more information about this this potential job okay so you make your way in town, and it's a pretty bustling place. You know, you got people setting up stalls here and there. You got, you know, different, you know, like baker and butcher and whatnot. They got lines going out the door, basically. It's, it's a happening place. Like, this is going to be fun. Um, make your way to the uh, the city hall and make your way inside, and the, there's a secretary kind of sitting at a desk at the front there. He's like, hello, can I help you? And there's going to be a lot of weird voices. Oh, no. Yeah. I I remember that voice specifically from some of our other playthroughs. Okay, okay. Yeah. No, it's okay. Like I'm just saying. I'm trying to trying to do that um what that secretary person from the Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to be the secretary lady? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's Hello, a, can I help you? <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> okay. Um uh yes, miss. Uh I'm here for the And she kind of looks up at your Nine foot tall ass. Oh. I'm here for the potential uh, job that was posted here. Uh, oh, okay. I, uh, I need some gold coinage. Understand. I need it very soon. Cool. Uh, just go go up the stairs to the right. The mayor will be expecting you. Okay. All right. I'll do that. <laughs> you make your way upstairs. Uh, on the door, it says Mayor Charles Pennyworthen. Yeah, Pennyworthen. Charles Pennyworthen. Okay. You knock um i just opened the door okay all right so you, you see the mayor he's a older gentleman a human gray hair gray mutton chops yeah and a monocle <laughs> now he's wearing like a like a nice shirt and a vest and whatnot you know he's cleaned up and whatnot yeah and he's like writing on some of the desk and he hears you walking he's like can i help you uh yeah sir um i'd, I'd like some more information about this potential but this job listing that was posted. Oh, yes, the job listing. Please come in, come in. And as you squeeze your way through the door, he's like, oh. <laughs> uh, please have a, a seat. And he kind of gestures towards a like a, a lounge couch, basically. Oh, there, there are other chairs, but I don't think you'll fit in them with your nine <laughs> foot ass. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a little kid trying to get into those little tiny plastic. Exactly. Or, or it's like a grown man trying to get into one of those little tiny plastic exactly. chairs. And it's he's like, oh. getting up and it's like still stuck to your butt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Salazar sits down then. Welcome, welcome to our our fine town of uh, Port of Saint Royal. My name is uh, Mayor Charles Pennyworthen at your service, sir. Uh, first, I'd like to thank you for answering our call for help here. Well, call for help might be a bit dramatic, but uh, you per might or may or may not have perhaps heard of a, a local. Mm, religious group shall we say that uh inhabits our town here a uh, group of folks that go by the name of cult of the crab cult of the crab cult of the crab is their name yes uh see they're a group of locals that have taken to worshiping uh a deity that takes the form of a giant crab from what i understand uh, a relatively recent addition to our fine town they only sprang up in the in the past few years or so and, well, rumor around town is that, that they uh, they don't take kindly to the, the crabbing industry here in, in our our fine town of Port Royal. Isn't that how you guys make a majority of your 
your money? Indeed it is, yes. The, the industry popped up suddenly about 10 or so years ago, and uh, things have been booming ever since. Uh, you might have noticed the, the new construction as you enter town and whatnot. It's been quite good for our town. Yes, I have, and uh, I also noticed that there, there's only one there's only one bar in town, and uh, I guess m- my question is why. Oh well, like I said, we're we're expanding. There, I'm sure there will be more bars and taverns and whatnot. There's actually two here in the uh, the town. There's the one you saw, and then there's one that I've actually set up accommodations for you as well, called uh, Bony Bill's Bed and Breakfast. Bony Bill's Bed and Breakfast. Yes. Well, we'll get to that more later. Um, for now. So, some rumors are going around that the cult might try something funny uh, this this upcoming crab festival here. Now, personally, I don't pay much ru- much to these rumors here. As I said, they're mostly just rumors. You know, old sailor talk and whatnot, and at the d- late nights in the bar kind of thing. The the cult themselves are members of the community. Like I said, they they've never done anything untoward towards anybody. They're perfectly pleasant. In fact, you. You look outside our window now, you'll probably see a, a small group of them passing out flyers for their cult in the town square there. And, like I said, they're perfectly peaceful, but uh, the rumors going around that uh, maybe they don't take kindly to the festival and whatnot. So, now, what, what did, sorry to cut you off, Mr. Penny... Pennyworthen. Pennyworthen. <laughs> Charles is fine. Too. Charles. Yes. So, Charles, I guess my question is, is what... What did what does this cult believe in necessarily? Like, is there something, is there something strange that they believe in on top of, uh, aside from them worshiping? To be honest, crabs? I've never paid them much attention myself. You know, what with working here at town hall and whatnot, so they've never disrupted anything, so I've never paid them much mind. Uh, some, like I said, some kind of giant crab. I don't know specific details. Uh, you're more than welcome to talk to the cult themselves. They're very friendly people. So. Okay. So how, I guess my question is, uh, yes. following up this, how much do I get paid for all this? Because i got to know if this is even worth my time. Well, shit. <laughs> you forgot about that part? It's a job listing. Part. It's a job listing, dog. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Just come up with some type of arbitrary number. The, the job itself pays 100 gold coins total. Plus, like I said, we have accommodations for you at mm. Bony Bill's Bed and Breakfast. Mr. Charles Penny Bottom, or whatever the hell Penny your name Worthen, is. Yes. Penny Worth. And it sounds like you kind of just wrote the job listing and then tried to see the first sucker that would come in here and then offer them 100 gold coins. So this is what I'm going to do. I'll do it for 150 coins. And I want a barrel of rum. 125 and a half barrel of rum. 124. Okay. Uh, oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me put that in my uh, sea turtle notebook here. Uh, 124 <laughs> and a half barrel of rum. And a half barrel of rum. So, I'm going to get that full that full barrel of rum. You be- Believe you me. Would, All the rum will be mine. 24 plus half barrel of rum. Okay. Well, so with that taken care of, uh, let me just look at my other notes here. So yes, I would, I would stop. I would recommend by perhaps maybe talking to the local cult there. Like I said, they're they're perfectly peaceful people. Uh, I don't suspect anything untoward is going to happen, but just in case, you know, just to set some of the minds at ease here at City Hall and whatnot, that's why we're hiring you. So walk around town, talk with the people, put your ear to the ground, and meet back here later. Okay. And then, uh, you, you, don't, you don't have any, uh, you don't care that I'm a dragonborn? You don't care that... Uh, I, I've been I've been through a lot of towns and uh, a lot of people don't look too kindly about dragonborn people working for them. Whatever. Like. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, equal opportunity lender. You know, I don't I don't know. I no, that's just, I understand. You certainly, yeah, some islands here in the Ben Isles are not as welcoming as others, but 
for the most part, we don't give a shit about other people's races. Like, <laughs> wait till you meet Bony Bill. Like, oh no, the Bony Bill. Trust me, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> uh, okay, so I guess I want to go try and talk to some of the cult members now. Okay, so you literally just step outside of the city hall and you see like a group of like maybe half dozen people. Yeah. Um, each of them are wearing some style of robe but you notice they're all kind of mixed mismatched you see some people are wearing like kind of like a like a japanese style kimono kind of robe you see other people are wearing like lo- looks like a wizard's robe of some kind yeah one guy's just straight up wearing a bathrobe <laughs> yeah um and you notice they're all wearing what kind of look like uh oven mitts but instead of being rounded they actually come to a, a point like a crab's claw almost. oh wow and then on the Somewhere on their robes is a, what looks like kind of a really rough shape of a crab. And you see them like, oh, please come join us for our service. And they're handing out flyers, but they, you know, they're wearing fucking mittens, so they like spill half of them <laughs> as they're handing it out. Like, here, here you go. And they hand them like a half crumpled one. Like, hey, come, come visit us. Yeah, well, oh my God. Everyone and everyone, anyone and everyone is welcome here. Yeah, come visit the cult. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like I said, I, I hope you weren't expecting this to be super serious. <laughs> so, so I guess I want to speak to whoever like the main, like, kind of person in this area is the main cult um, member in this area. I guess you'll talk to the guy in the bathroom then, because that's funny to me. Okay. So you, you walk up to the guy in the bathroom. He's like, ah, hello, oh, hello, hello up there. <laughs> Welcome to the point of port of Saint Royal. Can I offer you a flyer? And he hands you a half crumpled one. I in my mind, in my mind, all he sees it's like almost like an anime where it's like you see that his eyes are like white. You know what I mean? And it's just like this tall, huge, foreboding <laughs> thing. And there's just like drag. You just see like the breath. Like, <laughs> <It's> just <laughs> uh, <laughs> hello. W- would you Would you like to hear about our Lord and Savior, the Mighty Crab? Sure. <laughs> Oh, fabulous. Half crumpled flyer and whatnot. And it, it looks like like somebody just whole whole fist just drew a like a shitty picture of a crab. And then at the top it just says K R A B, but the B is backwards. Oh my gosh. So crab. <laughs> like it they wear these mittens all the time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh no. Like, uh yeah, we're we're holding a service. Um Tomorrow, actually, if you'd like to come and visit us at our, our, our sanctuary of the crab. Um, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll do that. I'm, I guess I'm just wondering, um, you know, what, what is your, uh, what's your group, what's your group all about? Oh, uh, well, see, we are, we are dedicated to the being called the Mighty Crab. The Mighty if, Crab. If you have a moment, I'll, I'll tell you the, the story that started our religion here. Sure. Ah, fabulous. Don't mind the... Samsung phone that I'm holding to reference the story so I don't miss any beats. So, (laughs) as the story goes, many eons ago when the universe was young and new, it is said that there were so many stars that filled the sky with light and there was no darkness. Amongst the stars lived great and terrible creatures, immense in size and vast in knowledge. One such creature was a serpent with many necks and many heads. When a neck stretched out, a head would open its jaws and swallow a star whole. The serpent devoured many stars, yet its hunger would not cease. With each star devoured, the light of the stars dimmed and darkness crept in. Disturbed by this, another of the great creatures, a being known as the Mighty Crab, challenged the many-headed serpent to a duel. If the crab won, then the serpent would cease its endless feasting of the stars. But if the serpent won, then it could feed on the crab's body until it was satiated. The serpent accepted and bit down on the crab's body with its many heads, but the crab shell was hard and tough, and the serpent's teeth could not pierce it. As the serpent struggled, the crab used its powerful claws to cut the head clean off of their necks. The battle raged on for untold centuries, and it is said there was so much blood gushing from the serpent's many necks that it extinguished even more stars and gave the darkness its inky black color. Finally, the many-headed serpent had been reduced but a single head left, but the crab's strength was failing, 
but it only had enough energy for one last strike. As the final head bit down on the crab, the crab thrust out not towards the serpent's neck, but the belly of the serpent. As the claw sliced the belly open, a blinding light poured from out from inside, as the, all the stars previously devoured had been molded into one giant star. As the serpent lay dying, the crab looked upon the new star and felt its warmth, becoming unbearably sleepy. The mighty crab receded into itself, pulling its legs and claws in close and forming a solid shell around itself, and fell into a deep sleep. The new star then began circling around the crab, bringing its, warmth, its warm light to every part of the crab's sleeping form. As the ages passed, mortal creatures began to take form amongst the now darkened starry sky. Fearful of the other great beings that lurked in the darkness, these early mortals fled to the safety of the crab's sleeping form, settling amongst the curvature of, <coughs> excuse me, of its armor, where no creature dared venture to, f dared to venture for fear of waking the crab and feeling its pinching claws on their necks next. And that is the story that founded our religion. Our, our faith believes that the mighty crab is a protector and a savior of all mortal beings in, in this world. We inhabit its very shell anywhere you see here in the world. The very ground you walk is the crab itself. And we, we, we honor the crab with our, our dedicated worship and our, you know, laws. So, yes. my first question. Yes. Do you guys know how batshit crazy you are? Yes. Okay. Um. Wh when is this event again? When am I? What's? Oh, we'll be holding a service tomorrow, and uh, just go down to the shoreline there. It kind of points towards the the ocean there. Just follow it down all the way to the cave. You'll it, it's a basically a straight shot. You'll find it easy. Um. Okay. Can I go there now? Oh, I'm afraid no. We, we've closed the sanctuary down today for cleaning and preparation for the ceremony tomorrow. Okay. Um, well, I'm just going to go to the bar then. Um, thank you for your the history lesson. I appreciate it, sir. Of course. Sir. And what's your name? I am Jerry. Okay. Thank you, Jerry. Yes, of course. And what is your name, good sir? Uh, Salazar. Salazar, well, I hope to see you at the ceremony tomorrow, Salazar. Have a great day. You have a great day, too. <laughs> and, and then you see all the other calls like, bye, crab. <laughs> so now, now this is going to be Salazar in, inner mo monologuing inner with monologue. himself. Okay. So these guys are freaking nuts. Um, but maybe, maybe I should go to the sanctuary while it's being cleaned today and try and get some more information or at the very least try to see if I, there's anyone around the sanctuary I could try to talk to. Sure. <laughs> okay. So I want to go to try and go to the sanctuary right now. Uh, so you make your way down the shoreline and you can see kind of in the distance that there's like a cliff face and that's probably where the cave is. Make your way down the shore and you see um, what looks to be the entrance of a cave, but it's been boarded up with a uh, very ramshackle looking wall. It looks like they kind of just collect like, bits of driftwood and you know the odd bit of scrap wood that they could find there and just kind of haphazardly nailed it together to a wall. Yeah. And in front of it, you see another uh, cult member dressed in similar things, shabby robes. He's got his mittens on. And he sees you approaching. He's like, ah, crab. Um, I do the same hand gesture like the crab people. Ah, crab. Um, uh, so I want to go up to him and... Be like, um, I heard about your religion, and I w would like to become a member. Ah, oh, crab. So what what do I have to do to become a member? Ah, oh, crab. Um, so I want to roll to knock this guy out. Okay. <laughs> 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 <Okay. laughs> Going right into it. Uh, let me see if I can find the quick base stat thing. There's gotta be like. I nor like oh, I was gonna wait till I got into any shenanigans, but this guy is like kind of pissing me off. Prayer. So I'm I'm gonna. I, I, what I want to do is I want to just hit him just hard enough where I hit him on the top of the head, and it's kind of like Andre, you know, in uh, Princess Bride. Oh, just kind of like hammer fist, just bonk. 
on the top of his head and he just okay. fa falls uh, to the ground. Okay, let me see. Oh, by the way, look, my, my tea's in a little barrel. Ah, barrel. A little barrel. I do enjoy cups that are shaped like that. Okay, so got some uh, some thingamabobs here. So roll me just a, a regular <coughs> attack roll. So you're going to take your d20, and you're going to add your, I think for you it's going to be your dexterity modifier. Which plus, is which is two? With, which will be plus two, and I think you also add your proficiency bonus because you are a monk, and this is kind of what you guys do. So plus two, so four, plus four? Yeah, so whatever you roll on the, uh, the thing there. You oh. add plus two to that. So 11 plus four, so I got 15. 15. Ooh, yeah, you bonked him real good. Bonked him real good. Bonked him real good. And for flavor purposes, we'll say, yeah, you just kind of, Andre the Giant, bonk, and he just kind of, ooh, crap, and falls face down to the sand. Um. Okay. So now I'm like kind of like scrambling. I'm like, oh, gosh. Uh, What do there, I do there, with him There's now? no, like, crate or barrel or anything. You just stuff him in there. It's just cliff wall. Wooden door itself. Um, can I bury um, him, but like put like a, take like like a straw or something to like leave so he can still breathe? Roll me an investigation to see if there's like a straw esque thing you could use. Uh, I got a nine. Nine. Um, you see what kind of look like cattails, kind of just a little bit, a little bit further up on the shore there. Don't know if they're hollow or not, but. Maybe. Okay, I want to investigate these cattails to see if I I because I, I don't want to kill him. I just want to bonk him so I can investigate this hideout. I mean, he he is he is sufficiently knocked out. So. Um. Yeah. yeah so, what do, are the are the cat? Uh, are the cattails hollow? I actually don't know for sure. <laughs> I don't know. I'll just, how let's just work. say. Let's just say that I think they are hollow. If I'm not mistaken. I wouldn't be surprised. But. Yeah, sure. You, you so, got someone you, in the comments is gonna be like, yeah, no, I, no, no, they, they no, are, they just, are not hollow. <laughs> you just straight up killed a guy. Like. <laughs> <laughs> you killed a guy, and then you shoved a bunch of cattails in his mouth and yeah. buried him in the sand. <laughs> sure. Um, roll me a medicine to like bury him in such a way that he won't just suffocate on sand. Oh God. <laughs> oh yeah. You did this to yourself. Uh, 20, dog. Okay. Is it a natural 20? Yes. All right. So, yeah, you, you, you like, use like one of your, your, your dragon claws. You like kind of whittle the, uh, gently whittle the cattail <laughs> to like a perfect little like modern day drinking straw. You kind of stick it in his mouth and then you bury him ever so carefully so that it, just in case you didn't block his nose and you got his mouth there, but also like should the tide come in or something, he'll be able to breathe. Yeah. And whatnot. And, <laughs> Just for the sake of this character, because he actually does have a name. It's Gary. It's written on his, his robe. Oh, damn. Was, I hope he wasn't supposed to be something. I mean, he was literally just a guy that just said crab. Well, that's what I thought. I was like, okay. He, he's yeah. not like anything that's going to yeah, he, amount to much. He, but. He's just going to make funny faces and say the word crab. So, yeah, that's Gary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so yeah, uh, you have successfully buried Gary uh, to where he won't die. Um, I want to... Try and scale. How, wait, how tall is the building? Um, it's God, you're nine feet tall, right? I was gonna say, oh, it's like ten feet, ten feet up in the air. So like, <laughs> yeah, it's like a foot taller than you. <laughs> I for some reason, when you were talking about the call of the crab, or when you're talking about their hideout, I thought you were like gonna say that it was like some type of like taller, like three or four story. No, it, it's building. it's like a natural cave that they just kind of made their sanctuary in <laughs> like okay so. yeah that, that actually makes more sense yeah. yeah these guys these guys are running around wearing crab claws crab, and crab mittens <laughs> just because you know they were a giant crab so they got, they got oh crab my mittens. gosh <laughs> so i was really happy with myself when i made that up I'm like oh wouldn't it be funny if the cult of the crab they're like <laughs> they got little crab claws <laughs> oh my gosh so oh my god i, I want to I guess just go in the front door. Just go in the front door? Yeah. Right. I, uh, it is locked. So I want to roll to smash the door. Or you just smash it open? Yeah. Okay. I, I I would try to, you know, lock pick it, but I don't think I have the... I mean, it's always worth a shot. You did just roll a nat 20 on a medicine, which I think that uses wisdom, so you're not, like, totally helpless. 
you can use any skill you see on that sheet. Just it's a matter of well, how much of a bonus you're getting to it. Is there a lock? But what would go with lock pick? That'd be sleight of hand. Sleight of hand. Yeah, I think that's a dexterity based roll there. Okay. Actually, yeah, you'd probably be. Oh, I have, to, I have a modifier of two for that. Yeah, that's that's one of your better skills. So okay, I'll, I'll try to lock pick it so I'm not like it. just okay. busting the freaking door down. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Eight. Eight. Eight yeah. plus. Fortunately, no, you're not able to, to jiggle it open. Damn it! Yeah, I feel like Salazar is not really a character that would be able to. Like his his hands are really big, so I just imagine him like trying to grasp. Oh, uh, what's something I can grasp? He he can let a little screwdriver and a bobby pin like and fall out. Just kind of like, <laughs> eh, come on, come on, come on, and then you ex just, you break both of them. <laughs> except like if this is like the normal size, it'd be like two little toothpicks. So yeah, like, yeah. Grr. Come on, and then you break both of your tools, and you're like, ah, crap. <laughs> Just throw them over towards Gary or whatever. <laughs> um, you hear Gary kind of mumbling something. Ah, prayer. <laughs> <laughs> That's even what he dreams about. It just for some reason, for some reason, Gary reminds me of like Timmy from South Park. <laughs> Krabby. 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 Um, so, yeah, I guess, you know, I'm just going to say F it and break the door down. All right. Um, roll me just a basic attack roll. You like kicking that door. I'm going to kick the crap out of this door. Twelve. Um, yeah, but you, you do break... I add anything to that or? I know you, you do. You like your, your decks and your uh, proficiency modifiers. So you're getting a plus four to that. Cool. So that's what, 16? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. It's not a bad roll. So, yeah, I'm going to say you you kick in the door and you take, like, half the wall with it. It's, it's not exactly a OSHA-approved wall there. So, <laughs> so yeah, half the wall just kind of goes yeah, into the cave and whatnot. So do you I, have made yourself known. <laughs> do I see anyone in the cave right now? Uh, initially, no. Your eyes kind of get – it's, like, middle of the day. So yeah. The sun's out and whatnot, and it's – Kind of a dark cave. You do see kind of like light glowing further inside the cave, but the immediate area inside the cave, it's, you got to let your eyes adjust a little bit there. Okay. So uh, I guess I guess I go forward. I have I have that. Uh, can I can I use one of my um one of my torches from my explorer's pack? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So yeah, you you pop out a torch, pop out your tinder box, and. Did you, did you use your, your fingers like that because it's so tiny to Cause, him? Because you're nine feet tall, <laughs> yes. I I forgot about that fact, so there's going to be a lot of like weird size scaling to this. How how foreboding would that be to have like a nine-foot-tall lizard man just towering over you? That's basically the size of like a young dragon. <laughs> like, <laughs> like some of the most powerful creatures... You stand like at eye level to them. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I just like when when I was reading initially the thing, mm -hmm. like how how tall dragonborns are. They're tall. Don't get me wrong. Like they're like they, they're six and a half feet normally. Yeah, yeah. But like I just thought it'd be funny to like. No, for, it, it's it's hilarious. To be like, nine feet tall. You know, <laughs> this is gonna be funny. Like I'm probably gonna have to have you like do like dex rolls or something to get through a freaking door just to. <laughs> Squeeze yourself in without collapsing the wall. Well, well, one of the when me and Ben were on the phone yesterday, like making this um, character stats up. Oh yeah. Uh, we were talking about what he should take, and one of them, like that, I could take was stealth. And I was like, it would not make. I mean, it would be beneficial if I took stealth for how big I am and stuff, but it just would not make it, any sense for the character it would at also all. Be just freaking hilarious. You're like sitting in like a nobleman's like living room or something. Like, oh, we gotta hide. So you hide behind like a lamp. And there's just like your nine foot tall self, just kind of like squeezed behind, just like a lamp the size of the the microphone stand here, just like. Oh my gosh. That, that's kind of the tone I like. <laughs> just the kind I have the lampshade on my head. No, I like I am the lamp now, and the, the lamp is like like four times the height that it was. You're wearing the lampshade, but you're holding a candle in front of it, so like there's just wax dripping on the floor. Like, yeah, this will work. <laughs> My luck is at a ten as well. Heck yeah. Um, so okay, so so you walk in um, with your torch illuminating that initial hallway. You don't see like any other guards or anything like that. Um, as you're walking in, you kind of hear like a and you see a, a guy in there kind of sweeping. He's like, 
Oh, hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> um, I, I assume the wall is uh, not there anymore. Uh, I tell him that I'm an independent contractor that was sent to fix the door. Um, oh, excellent timing. <laughs> uh, so you know, is uh, I was just wondering, like, um, and then I attack him. <laughs> oh. Uh no 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 okay I'm not gonna attack him I'm not gonna attack him I'm 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 trying to think that's, smart if you want to attack him that's fine well I want to attack him I really do but I also want to like get a little bit of information out of this guy okay so um Let's see where I'm gonna put this guy's name here I have a name for him can uh is there any way that I can like roll to intimidate him to you do have an intimidation skill you can roll for what where is it on the sheet um. Somewhere in your skills list there. I don't remember exactly where it is, but it, it'll just say intimidation. Oh, intimidation's based on charisma? Yes. So my charisma is, I have a modifier of plus zero. Plus zero. All right, so it'll be just a straight D20 roll there. Okay. So, so you, you want to, like, intimidate him to... Uh, to see, I want to I wanna intimidate him, and I, I want to see, like, I want to ask him what he knows about um, an upcoming attack. On the, for the like on the festival oh, okay. that's coming up. All right, so go ahead, roll me a d twenty. Ten. Ah. So, ah. so when you 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 kind of like roar and like tell me your secrets, human. And he's like ah, please don't eat me. I I don't know of any kind of attack or anything like that. I I I'm just a humble cult leader. Please don't hurt me. Um, you're so you're the leader. Yes, my my name is Barnabas Kane. I. I started this humble cult, religion, whatever you want to call it, please. Well, listen, Barnabas. Ah! I want to know why I'm hearing through my circles, through little birdies talking around town, why they're saying that your cult is is going to attack the festival, okay? Because I, I got a lot of money riding on this. 124 gold pieces and half a barrel of rum. But you know what? I'm going to make it a full barrel because I do such a good job. Please, sir. Uh, we ha the, the cult has no intention of harming anybody. We we merely wish to spread the word of our Lord and Savior, the mighty crab. I, I swear it. Then 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 why am I hearing these things? I I, I I can't account for rumors and whatnot. I mean, sure, our, our humble cult is a little strange compared to most people, but I assure you, we have only the most honest of intentions. Sir, let me show you something. Uh, I want to roll to shoot my dragon... I want to roll to shoot my dragon uh, electricity beam through where the door was. Uh, and you won't have to roll that because you're not making any kind of attack or anything like that. So oh. you just... And lightning just strikes through the cave and shoots out and whatnot. Hopefully that doesn't hit anybody. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it doesn't kill Gary or Jerry, whatever the hell his name is. It's just <laughs> sleeping underneath in the sand. Crab. 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 <laughs> Crab. And he kind of... Tries to roll over, but he's buried, so he kind of stays place. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Please, sir. We, I assure you, we have no ill intentions. We. I can do that with my, my with my breath, okay, sir? I'm not messing around. I, I'm well aware of how dragonborns can use breath weapons. I, I'm, you're not the first. I'm, you are the tallest, but you're not the first. Let's just say I believe you that you guys don't intend to do this. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take away from the fact that I'm going to drag you along with me until I figure out and get to the bottom of this. <laughs> And get my 124 gold pieces. What do you mean, drag me? Uh, I think I think I meant what I said. Now, either you can come with me willingly, or I can break your arms but... and stuff and stuff you and stuff you in my backpack like C-3PO in The Empire Strikes Back. Uh, sir, you're breaking the fourth wall. We can't do that. <laughs> How do you even know what the fourth wall is? I talked to giant crabs, all right, my guy. I know what the fourth wall is. <laughs> okay, so can I can I take this guy with me? Do I have to roll for it? Do um, I have to? I I know it's a kind of a weird request. It is, yeah. <laughs> we 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 can go a different route if you want. I no, just... no, no. It's fine. I'm I'm interested to see how this will play out. So, roll me, roll me just another attack roll to just kind of like pick him up, basically. Okay. Slightly different. Twenty. Nat twenty? Yep. Oh yeah, you grab him. I'm not even gonna try and look for another thing. So yeah. <laughs> just you, like just like kinda like just 
pick him up at by his head and just kind of stuff him into your bag. I, when you say that, it's like I imagine like a claw machine. Like yeah, my yeah, hands yeah. like a claw machine and just like. But as you're lifting it up, it kind of like hits the top of the rack too hard, and then the prize flips out. So he just kind of lands on his face. Give it. <laughs> No, you you successfully pick him up and stuff him into your oversized backpack. <laughs> like, sir, please don't don't do this. There's a sermon tomorrow. I must be there for it. As you close the the lid, <laughs> I just kidnap him. Yeah, you you yeah. Oh my you gosh. That. <laughs> okay, so I've already committed. I I might as well continue. Is this does this follow? Uh, because I my plan was to be chaotic good. <laughs> Is this? chaotic good or is this following a different type of path this probably leans a little bit more to evil but it's not like you didn't just walk in and like start murdering people like you you had the intent of like oh we're just gonna knock him unconscious where yeah. I, I would think like a chaotic evil would have just been like oh hello stab in the neck yeah, yeah. You, you wouldn't have bothered like trying to like you, you bonked <laughs> gary on the head but like the intent was to just kind of give him out of the way yeah in the easiest fastest way possible yeah I, i'd still probably call that chaotic good because like you're not intending to murder anybody, at least not yet. <laughs> yeah, not until I get messed with, or until uh, my, my man's doesn't pay up with my uh, 124 gold pieces. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. <laughs> oh God, I don't know what that was. That was a uh, a little scary, but we'll we'll see what happens. Um, All right. So you you now you now have uh, the cult leader Barnabas Kane just stuffed into your bag there like a chihuahua in a. Can, in a purse. Can I still hear him? Like, can I still talk to him? You can still hear him. He kind of muffles, like, rrr, 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 and he's kind of like fumbling in the bag. You can feel him kind of like squirming around, but it's kind of hard to make him out. What with all your your equipment and whatnot are stuffed in there too. <laughs> Just all jostle jostle it around in mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess I wanna I wanna look around. Uh, I wanna investigate the the area inside of this so i won't have you make a roll just yet so the the cave itself is it's a natural formed cave you know you um in the center of the cave you see uh like a natural skylight uh glowing down onto a statue probably about as tall as you are here yeah of a a giant crab also made similar to the uh the the wall slash door just made of like driftwood and scrap wood and whatnot of a crab just kind of like arms spread and like ah and in front of it, you see, like, half-melted candles and the odd incense stick here and there. Yeah. There's nothing immediately apparent. Like, it's a pretty pretty normal cave, you know. You've seen one just like it, maybe not with a crab in it, but, yeah, you know, nothing fancy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. I guess I want to ask Jerry, is there any hidden – or Jerry, what the hell is his name? Barnabas. Barnabas, sorry. Barnabas Kane. Barnabas Kane. That's a good name. Yeah. Uh, Barnabas, is there any hidden passages in here? Uh, can I, like, lift the top yes. of the bag <laughs> so I can at least hear him? Yes. I, sir, this is a natural formed cave. I was led here by our guard. The, the, there's no secret entrance aside from the one you just walked through. I mean, there's a small alcove where I, I stay in, you know, here in the cave and whatnot. But, like, the. Why do I feel like this is a setup? I feel like I feel like I'm gonna end up messing with these people a lot, and it's just gonna make me look like an a hole. <laughs> I know it's like all right, all right. Sky's the limit at this point. <laughs> so uh, I guess we'll figure out how bad I've messed the situation up. I'm getting my 124 gold pieces no matter what happens, and sure. you you better believe that. That's a promise. It's a promise. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a threat, but whatever. It can't, why why I can't it be both? I mean, sure it can be both, but like. So okay, it's been nothing but friendly to you. <laughs> so uh, we camera three is not working. Oh okay, I've been going between camera one and two. All right, whatever. Bro- breaking the fourth wall again. Um, what was I gonna say? So I guess I'll leave the cave because there's nothing to really see here. Okay. Can, do I need? Can I roll to investigate? Yeah, go ahead and investigate. Yeah, I got a 16. The whole idea of the dice tower. Should, that, should I roll did, again? No, it's fine. You, you got a what, a 60? Yeah. The, the only time I'll say to re-roll is if it lands on the floor or something, we're going to like go scrambling around for it. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. All right. But like, the whole idea of the dice tower was that you didn't throw your dice across all the, the desks I know. and the equipment and whatnot. I know. I'm sorry. 
Yeah. Anyway, what was it? Sixteen. Yeah. Uh, plus your modifiers. Uh, well, so the proficiency think, bonus is twelve, but then what? What goes with uh? I think uh, so. Investigation is intelligence. Yeah. So I have a plus zero, so it's just plus, plus two. Okay. okay. So are you proficient with investigation? No. Okay. So you just just straight dice roll. So proficiency is so. Remember, we had you check off some certain skills and whatnot. Those would be the skills that you add your proficiency bonus to. Okay, okay, yeah. that makes more that makes more sense. It's it's a little confusing. Just so everybody knows, I've never played the real version of this game. That's a good point too. We didn't uh, mention that. Yeah. The way that me and Ben always used to do it when we played together is just rolling, uh, just the yeah, just twenty throwing dice at each other. Yeah, basically. That's just all just just talking to each other. You know, yeah. making we're, stories. We're doing like official D and D with t- just the two of us. Yeah. <laughs> all right, two dudes hanging out in the room. The the dude that's play a crew. Both wearing pants. Finally. <laughs> we have we had to put pants on today to come to the studio. I had to put on pants to go to work, so Oh I know. So that's the only bad part about work is having to put on pants. Fucking clothes and shit. Anyway. I'm I'm a person that likes flip flops a lot. Oh yeah. So can't, can't be wearing those. No, well especially in a factory. Like mm. they uh I got yelled at one day because I was wearing flip yeah, flip flops. They're yeah. like, dude, what are you doing? We could like run your foot over. Like, you could get like a nail in your foot. Yeah. You got to wear boots or something. I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So you're investigating the cave. So you got a twelve. And there's, like you said, there's not really much to see there. You do notice, kind of towards the back of the cave, is a, a small little alcove and whatnot. It's got a, like a tiny little cot in it. Um, a little tiny little desk and whatnot. Some odd papers here and there. But that's really about it for this cave. There's not a particularly big, like, expansive cave system or something can, like that like you've seen before. Can I look more? This will probably be the last thing I do in here, but can I look more in? I want to investigate the desk. Yeah, sure. So you, you're kind of shuffling through the desk. Um, he's got, like, you know, different speeches kind of prepped out and whatnot. You know, he he does actively lead this cult and whatnot. So these appear to be, like, his different sermons that he'll give um, throughout the year and whatnot. Like, oh, it's the cult's version of Christmas. We'll use this sermon versus... Yeah. This version of Easter, we'll use that sermon kind of thing. Nothing seemingly heinous by nature, just like, hey, the crab likes to protect us and whatnot. That's pretty cool. Kind of the gist of it. Gotcha. Yeah. Um. So, man, I feel like I've messed up here. Uh, is there any chance of me being able to knock him out so that he doesn't remember this interaction, or he will for sure remember this interaction? Mm, you don't have any particular like skills, or skill, anything. or ability, or spell that would modify his memory. <sighs> Crap! And like, in reality, like hitting somebody that hard that they get like amnesia, like causes serious brain damage. So, um, yeah. I mean, you can try talking to him smooth it over <laughs> like hey this was a misunderstanding can i buy you dinner or something, um, something I, like that. I ask him if i can uh, by the way uh, one of my character flaws is that my character is suffers from alcoholism oh, okay. and that's going to tie into some stuff that we uh we're talking about mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. my character progression in the future mm-hmm. um but i guess i guess i want to ask him like Hey, like this is all just a big misunderstanding. Is it okay if uh can I take you out for a drink or something, man? Roll me a persuasion. We <laughs> <laughs> just tried smooth it over after I broke your freaking the door down in your your cold like, house. I'm uh, I'm for you. This house. is gonna be a difficult one here because like <laughs> had this happened in real life, you would have called the police. Nineteen. Nineteen. Well dang. <laughs> And 19, dog. <laughs> All right. So I, I assume you, you, like, you like pull him out of the backpack and, like, hey. <laughs> um, well, I I mean, the crab teaches forgiveness, so I, I, I do forgive you, my tall friend. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe take a rain check on the drink, though. I, I suppose we can... Let this slide over, but next time, perhaps just use the, well, I guess using the door might be a bit difficult, but maybe just knock first. Okay. 
that that that'll work. Um, so we're, we're cool. We're friends. I suppose so. Hello. If at any point you felt you needed to confess your sins, your boy. That's okay. I don't worship giant crabs, but uh. Oh, you should try it. It's real fun. Yeah, I'm. I'm sure. Um, I'm gonna get going though. Okay. Very well. I. I do kind of hope we see each other in the future. Perhaps under more peaceful circumstances. I'll, um, maybe you'll see me at the, um, what, what was it that they had, that they're having at their cult? Like a ceremony. Maybe I'll see you at the ceremony. Is it the, tomorrow? The, the next day, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, maybe I'll see you at your ceremony tomorrow. Very well, then. I shall, I shall see you then, good sir. Peace. He like tries to mimic you, but he is a crab claw. <laughs> he's like, he's like, he tries but, to like. Uh, peace, peace be with you, sir. <laughs> um. So, <laughs> so, I guess I want to go back. I'm considering just like telling, telling the the mayor like I think they're fine. I don't think there's an attack. If there's an attack, maybe it's coming from someone that's trying to blame it on these. Crazy cult people. Okay. So you, you make your way back to City Hall, and the secretary's like, oh, hello again. Is that the voice I was using? Oh, sure. And you just go on up, sir, and you squeeze your way through the door, and uh, <laughs> Mayor Charles Pennyworth is like, so how did it go? Uh, It went it went pretty good. Um, You know, I got information the peaceful way. Uh, Didn't do any type of destruction. Or anything, you know, it's hard to believe because I'm a giant, nine foot tall lizard man. But um, yeah, yeah, it was uh, enlightening. Uh, hmm. They're freaking crazy. Yeah, they are bad, a strange lot. Yes, bad shit, crazy. But um, yeah, I think they're all good. So I would like my 124 gold pieces now. But I also would like to tell you that there's also potential that maybe someone's trying to set these people up. Which leads into. My next request from you, sir. Would it be perhaps be possible for you to stay till the end of the week, just until the festival itself is over and all this rumor nonsense blows over? Um, yes, but it depends how much you're willing to pay me after the 124. And I want the full barrel of rum. The full barrel. Uh, how about an extra 50 gold and we'll toss in the other half of the barrel? You got yourself a deal. Fabulous. Uh, on the, the mention of rumors, um, another one has come across my desk. Uh, people are saying, we so we keep the supplies for our uh, festival, you know, the banners and the fireworks and whatnot, in a little warehouse just uh, down by the docks there. Would it be possible to have you maybe just watch over the warehouse tonight? Again, rumors of, you know, unscrupulous fellows perhaps... Plotting something not so neighborly. Wait, is to is tonight the ceremony for the? Oh, no. that's the next day. Yeah, that, that'll be the next day. And then when is the when is the parade? The the festival and whatnot will be like, it's like Monday today. It'll be like, probably like Saturday. Okay. So there's plenty of time. Yeah, yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. Um. I'm willing to, I'm willing to do that. Oh, splendid. Well, since it will be a late night operation, perhaps you'd like to. Maybe take a nap for the afternoon at uh, Boney Bill's Bread and Bed and Breakfast. Boney Bill's? Boney Bill's Bed and Breakfast. The finest establishment in all the town, I assure you, sir. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, as long as... Did you guys cop me the room? Or do I have Yes, to... we, we, have, we have a room and whatnot reserved for the rest of the week here until the job it's in its entirety is finished and whatnot. And Boney Bill will take care of your food and board needs. Okay. Yeah. Um. I guess I'm. I'm gonna make my way over to, to Boney Bills and um. Maybe try and get some rest. Have a, have a beer or something. So to get to Boney Bills, uh, let me pull up the directions here real quick. Uh, here we are. So to get to Boney Bills, uh, when you exit the uh city hall here, immediately turn right. Follow the road there till you reach First Street, right? And then turn right onto First Street. Then follow that until you get to Rose Way. Then turn right onto Rose Way. Follow Rose Way until you get to Main Street. 
and then turn right. All right? Follow that all the way to Boney Bills. But if you hit City Hall again, you've gone too far, and you'll have to restart. I'll have to restart? Yes. Um, do you think you could just have your secretary show me how to get there? Because I'm definitely going to forget all of this. Oh, it's quite here. I, I'll, I'll write it down. Okay, that, that'll that work. And he, he writes down the instructions, follow to First Street, turn right. Okay. Go to Roseway, turn right. Go to Main Street, turn right. Follow straight to Boney Bills. If you hit City Hall, you've gone too far, start over. Is this a weird riddle thing? No, it's just directions. And he hands you He hands you the... the but if you're going there. all rights, aren't you just going to end up in the same place? Maybe. Oh my god, is this going to be like one of those towns where it's like the, the the guy is like everything in the town or something like uh, the mayor is the the mayor is the pizza delivery man as well as like uh, No, 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 because no. if, if you hit City Hall, you've gone too far and you got to start over, okay? You just <laughs> Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll we'll see what's going on. So right. I I I want to start this this journey, this short journey. So you you out of City Hall, you turn right. Yep. Follow it all to to First Street. Correct. Turn right. Follow that all the way to Rose Way, and you turn right. Okay. And you go all the way to Main Street, and you turn right. And as you get to Main Street, you notice, like, this is the road that I followed to get into town. Like, I followed this road to get to City Hall. But as you're making your way down the road to City Hall, you notice just a little bit before City Hall is a dark storm cloud hanging just above a single building. Okay. And as you get closer to the building, you it's like... It's weird. It's like middle of the day, sunny and bright, except there's one cloud centered above this one building. And as you get closer, you see this like rickety old mansion looking thing. Okay. Imagine like just your stereotypical haunted house, right? So you mm-hmm. got like broken windows and like, you know, window shutters kind of hanging off of one hinge and whatnot. The place has got like peeling paint and there's like a dead tree out front and whatnot. And uh, you see a, a sign kind of hanging off of one chain or something that says Boney Bill's Bed and Breakfast. You have found the place. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I go I go into Boney Bill's bread and breakfast as you approach, bed and breakfast. As you approach the uh the front door, just just before you touch the door handle, the door opens by itself and I <laughs> creak. Okay. And you walk in the, the like the immediate main area is kind of set up like your stereotypical tavern and whatnot, but place is looking maybe a bit shabby. You know, tables are kind of lopsided and whatnot. Some of them are kind of propped up on old dusty books and whatnot. There are cobwebs all over the place. Yeah, you see a a particularly large spider kind of scuttle across the floor real quick. <laughs> and you see sitting at sitting at uh, the bar is another patron. Um, then kind of like tucked off to the corner is another couple of guys just kind of eating dinner or something. Yeah. And you notice behind the bar is a skeleton. The skeleton turns towards you, just kind of waves its hand. Uh, so Salazar waves back um, and I guess goes over to the skeleton to try and talk to it. And as you approach, it just, just kind of stares at you. Um, and I, I guess I ask, can it communicate to me? Is that the gesture that he gives? Yes, that he's a skeleton. Okay. Um, the the patron sitting at the bar kind of knows. He's like, uh, you'll have to forgive old Bill, Bony Bill there. His lungs and whatnot dropped out a few years ago. Hasn't been able to talk since. How How is he still uh, able to move around if he's just a skeleton? Ah, well, that's a bit of a story if you got the time for it. I've always got a time for a good, uh, good uh, tale. Ah, fabulous. Well, uh, have a seat, my tall friend. Bill, perhaps a drink for all my friend here. And Bill just kind of slides you over. What kind of tastes like vinegar? Okay. Yeah. Is it alcohol? It is alcoholic, yes, but it's not good alcohol. Oh, no. Yeah. That's not. That's never good? I mean, whatever. So, ah, the story of old Boney Bill here and his bed and breakfast kind of stretches back a, oh, I was but a wee lad when it all happened. See? Back in the day, Boney Bill, uh, Boney Bill here used to be just called Bill. And his bread and breakfast was, uh, well, a pretty nice establishment. The best, best bar and inn you could have in a town. And then some fucking bitch, I mean witch, stumbled into town one day <laughs> and 
order, orders all kinds of food, demands a, a room and whatnot, and says she's going to pay in some weird currency we'd never heard of. What was it called? Um, oh, that's right. Exposure? You ever heard of that? Paying in exposure? No. Yeah, never heard of that. We'd, we'd never heard of that. Old Bill there never heard of that. So he's like, no, you, you got to pay up in gold. But then this fucking, this bitch, I'm sorry, witch, <laughs> was like. <laughs> <laughs> you ask someone not to do something, and they do it anyway. Part of the whole effect here. <laughs> <laughs> so the this this witch uh, says, "Oh well, I'm gonna cast a spell on you or something like that." So she steps outside, waves her hands around in some weird gesture, and suddenly, just seemingly in an instant, old old Bill's bed and breakfast turned into what you see here today. Hmm. And well, Strange. yeah, it was, was a bit off-putting at first. Like you know, naturally, we tried to fix the place up a bit, but it seemed like every time you turned around. Uh, all the work you'd done just be instantly undone. You know, you try to clean up the cobwebs, and then the cobwebs are back. You try to fix a door frame, and suddenly it was broken again. And yeah, initially it was off-putting and whatnot, but I mean, people just kind of got used to it. You know, at the time, Phony Bills was the only place in town you did get a decent drink, and well, I mean, it didn't affect Bill at least not at the time. So he was the still same friendly gentleman he always was. So people just kind of came back. Hmm. And, Eventually, the, you know, kind of had, people kind of start to find a nice charm to the place, you know, same talk of the town, and I understand. It, it actually did pretty good for Bill at the time, and then the, the witch came back, did I say bitch, I'm sorry, witch, she comes back, <laughs> <laughs> she, she comes back one day, Ben just, curses a third time, <laughs> <laughs> it's, part, it's part of the story, <laughs> it's fine, <laughs> okay, uh, so, uh, the witch comes back one day. <laughs> <laughs> the witch. The witch comes back one day, and she finds oh the place is doing pretty good despite her curse and whatnot. So she lays a second curse. I'm sure somebody told you about the strange directions and whatnot to get here. Well, it turns out if you don't follow that strange roundabout way to get here, you won't find the place at all. And initially, yeah, people couldn't find it, but then just you know, place was so popular we found it through trial and error. <laughs> Yeah, it took us a couple of tries, but yeah, we came Through back. Through trial and error. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Then word spread like, oh yeah, just take a right here and then a right there and a right there. And you hit City Hall, you've gone too far, you got to start over again. Yeah, you know. So how is Bill's business with that the other tavern? The mayor was telling me that you guys have another tavern or something. Oh yeah, that place is uh, rather new. I mean, it's popular with, you know, the, the younger folks and whatnot who likes a little bit of something a little bit different and whatnot, but... You're looking for good, honest service and whatnot. I mean, old Bill there, he runs a tight ship, I tell you. You want you want best service in town? You come to Bony Bills. Mm-hmm. What what happened to this witch? Ah, we never heard from her again. Yeah, I suppose she flew off somewhere on a broomstick or something. We didn't like her, so we didn't keep in touch, you know? Hmm. Yeah. I, I'm wondering if there's any way for me to try and help Bony Bill at some point here. Well, see, that's the thing. We thought, like, oh... Back in the day, we were like, oh, Bill, you know, your poor business and whatnot. But, like, Bill didn't seem to be bothered to it. Like like I said, the business was doing good, and it didn't seem to affect him until he died, that is. And even then, he was like, he was still the same Bill, so, you know. Yeah, he was, you know, he smelled for a little bit, but then, you know, it all kind of fell off eventually. And there Damn. you are. You see Bony Bill. And, Bony Bill. Yeah. I mean, like I said, he, same same Billy always was. Yeah, he can't talk anymore, but you know, he runs a tight ship. So yeah, people keep on coming on back. I've I've been coming to old Bill's here since I was but a wee lad. How old are you now, sir? Oh, I don't even remember anymore. <laughs> been out to sea one too many times, you know, stranded here and there. But all roads lead to Bony Bill's, I tell you. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I like it. I like the cut of your jib, sir. I like you too, my tall friend. <laughs> Would you like to share a drink together? I'd love to share a drink. Bo, Bony Bill, two more drinks here. And he slides two more large cups of that same like weird vinegary tasting alcohol. Um, I want to ask. I want to ask. Uh, what, what is this guy's name? Or did I, have I not asked? 
you haven't asked. Uh, well, what's your name again, sir? Uh, my name's Larry. <laughs> okay. Uh, what was I going to say? Larry. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I was going to ask Larry. <laughs> let's have this drink, Larry. Ah, let's have a drink here. And he kind of holds up his mug and he clacks it against yours. Like, ah. Um, ah. And then I ask him, like, I ask him, like, what do what what is this drink? Like, ah, well, see, Phony Bill used to serve, like, the usual, you know, wine, beer, and whatnot, but then the curse hit, and it kind of kind of turned into whatever this weird drink is. We're not entirely sure what it is. It comes out of the beer barrels that he has downstairs, but, I mean, it gets you drunk, so. Are we, are we safe to be drinking this uh, mystery elixir? I've been drinking it for years now, and it never seemed to have any effect. And as he says that, his, his eye just kind of rolls back. Just the one eye, though. And then it kind of snaps back. Like, never affected me, so... Eh. I was practically raised on the stuff. Uh, so I guess I drink it anyway. <laughs> and it's... It's it's not a great drink. It's mostly just the bitter taste of alcohol with a little vinegary tinge to it. Yeah. But it'll get you drunk. That's that. That's the goal. <laughs> All right, so... How many how many how many drinks do you do you have with old Larry here? Um, well, I assume that if I'm sitting with Larry, he tells me a few more stories. Um, so I uh, let's say I have about eight drinks. Eight drinks and passing stories and whatnot. Yeah. And you've been you've been drinking for a while, so eight. You're a bit buzzed and whatnot, but we'll say you're not like you're not like too tipsy, but you're buzzed. So yeah. You, you've been drinking for a while. You're been around the block you've had your fair share of drinks so plus eight. i'm nine feet tall so it plus distributes not, pretty yeah, evenly throughout yeah. my entire body yeah so you, you have your drinks you're eh, maybe a little wobbly when you first stand up but you recover pretty easily larry on the other hand he's he's pretty much out at this point like he's <laughs> just passed out on the uh the bar there um bony bill comes up behind him just kind of puts a blanket over him i i asked bony bill does he does larry have a um does larry have a room here. He, he nods his head. Yeah. Uh, which, what number is his room? Room number twelve. Uh, two. Okay. Yeah. Neat. I'm sorry. I'm seeing like twelve of your fingers right now. Um. <laughs> uh. So, I guess. Uh. Yeah. I I take Larry up to his room. All right. And Bony Bony Bills follow follows you up there, and he. Pulls out like this big, like you know, haunted house style, just like giant key ring of like old iron <laughs> keys. And as he opens the door and opens it, and inside it's yeah, it's a haunted mansion. So there's like cobwebs all over the place. There's like an old mirror in the corner with a, over like a, a sheet over it. Yeah. There's a, a painting on the wall that kind of like follows you wherever you look, wherever oh, no. you go. Yeah. I'm um, enjoying this place. It's it's yeah. it's fun. <laughs> yeah. And then the the bed itself, like yeah, it's old, rickety, and whatnot. But like the sheets are clean at least, and whatnot. Yeah, it's not like bed bug ridden or anything. So like, yeah, it'd be it'd be a comfortable night. So I assume you just kind of flop Larry onto it, and there you go. Okay, so I guess uh, now I would like to go to my room now that I've talked to my new friend, and I'm I should probably make a note. Some of these names. Uh, I'm sure. I'll watch it back later. <laughs> Good, because I'm not gonna remember these names. <laughs> oh no! Well, I'll make a I'll make a comprehensive list later yeah. on. All, all the like one off characters that I make up on the spot. <laughs> I well, I like Larry. Larry's a cool guy, and I like Bony Bill. He's they're 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 fun. They're they know how to party, and I'll I'll be coming to Bony Bill's every night instead of going to go pay that other newer, uh, fancy tavern a visit. Sure. With all their new. Uh, Tangled yeah. barrels and that, whatnot, you know. That other tavern that I totally have a name for. <laughs> <laughs> it's just in town. That's all we need to know. It doesn't need to have a name. Whatever. Um, That's the cool hip thing to do. Hide the name of the tavern somewhere in the tavern. You got to find it. <laughs> I'm just people. Like, anyway. It sounds like a bad cartoon episode. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of what this whole thing is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so Bony Bill leads you a little bit further down the hall to uh, room five. Yeah. He, same thing. And same style of room. It's got like, you know, old 
antique dolls just kind of lining the place that are all kind of staring at the bed. Yeah. And Bill just kind of like, here you go. Um, so I tell, I, I tell Bill, thank you. Uh, thank you for your service. It's impeccable. And I'll be coming back to his tavern all week. All right. Good night, Bill. So close the door. <laughs> and, uh, I guess I go to bed. All right. So you lay down to bed, get yourself as comfy as you can with your nine foot ass. <laughs> Roll me a perception. Okay. 18. Ooh, yeah. So <laughs> maybe, maybe about an hour or so after you uh, you lay down to bed, you hear... Ooh. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God, what was that? <laughs> and then you hear it again. Ooh, a little bit closer to you. Okay. Ooh. And you see this, like, cartoonish ghost, like the sheet with the holes cut out of it. Yeah. Look, his head just kind of pops up out of your nightstand. Ooh. Uh, wh- what are you doing? Going. Ooh. What? Why are you in my room right now? This this is my assigned spot. Assigned by who? By the Actually, I don't know. You don't know? Yeah. That's a cop-out. When you just kind of appear one day in a haunted mansion, you just kind of... I want to I want to roll to intimidate this ghost. Go for it. <laughs> okay. He's not intimidated. At three. <laughs> <laughs> He's already dead. What does he care? <laughs> I, I don't know. I thought I'd give at least give it a shot. <laughs> like, why not, you know? You know it's bad health? bad health to go to sleep angry yeah i'm sure you know i don't sleep anymore you know, I, what with being dead i'm assuming you were a human i'm, I'm, I'm a dragonborn it's a little bit different for us it's actually encouraged for us to go to bed angry all right so don't tell me how to live my life and okay. from someone that has a non-life now or what, whatever you happen to be on living yeah that makes sense So, are you just going to keep doing this, or am I going to get some sleep tonight? I mean, for just a little while until the other guy comes in. The other guy? Yeah. Who's the other guy? Uh, You'll find out soon enough. Just go back to bed. Don't mind me. Okay. I I go back to sleep. I'm like, you know, frick you guys. You guys are... I don't even want to have to deal with this. Okay. (laughs) Roll me one more perception. Okay. Seven. Oh, okay. Yeah. You sleep the rest of the night. No problem. Okay. <laughs> Is, were those just like supposed to be comedic characters? Yes. Okay. It's a haunted house. I was like, I was like, okay, <laughs> this, like, is, 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 are they going to tell me some type of information or? <laughs> He's just there to mess with you. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, um, what do we? Uh, so you 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 got a, a a night mission to help out with here. Oh right, right. Because you you wake up maybe like five. Oh, so six. I was doing. I was basically like just getting sleep to. Yeah, to like be able to stay up during the night there. Yeah, okay. So you wake up maybe, kind of like five hours or so later, and the sun's you know setting in the distance and whatnot. You're like, all right, time to get to work. Yeah. <laughs> Head on out, meet up with the the mayor again real quick or something. Um, yeah, I wanna I wanna get a a drink from uh from Boney Bill. All right, like a road beer. A road beer, okay. Yep. So you, you're walking downstairs and you see Boney Bill just kind of standing at the counter. He looks over at you, waves. I wave back, um, and I ask him if he can get me a another vinegar beer Not concoction. Just- Nods his head and he kind of turns to a, a little window that's cut into the side of the wall there with a little bell on it. Just ding. And then after a moment, you see this like, purple gooey tentacle just kind of raise up from out of the corner of the window with a tankard on it. With a what? With a, a cup tankard. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it kind of raises up out of the corner, sets the thing on the, 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 
the mug on the uh, the counter there. Okay. And then slips back into the, the shadows. Um. And then Bony Bill picks up the tanker and clacks it in front of you and offers it to you. So and you I, notice he's got like a little bit of slime on it, but the drink itself is not affected. So I I guess I just you know try to wipe as much of the slime off as I can and mm-hmm. like on on his uh <laughs> his uh countertop or his bar top or whatever. I'm just like. He pulls out a rag, just kind of wipes it up real quick. He's <laughs> <laughs> like shaking his head. Um, but used to it. <laughs> then, uh, so I guess I take the beer to go, and I go to the the mission that I took. Okay. So I didn't have the mayor tell you where the thing was, but I, so we head back to city hall, and you meet up the mayor, and he's like, "All right, fo- follow me, good sir," and he leads you down towards the docks and whatnot to a. Kind of a small warehouse and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, pretty standard looking building, you know. It's like a kind of like a giant version of a house, but you know, it's a warehouse. Yeah. So, all right. This is the warehouse where we're keeping all the, the festival supplies and whatnot in. And like I said, I don't pay much mind to these rumors, so you know, you want to just pace around every like once every hour or so. You know. Just this is mostly just to set people's worries uh, aside and whatnot, like I said. Uh, Cult has been perfectly peaceful with everybody, so you know if you if you happen to doze off or something like that, you'll still get paid. It'll be fine. Sweet. All right. Have a good night. Stay safe and all that good good stuff. Well, you seem like a a well seasoned fighter, so I wouldn't be too worried. <laughs> when he says that, all he, he's like looking up, and it's just like before, like the anime thing. It's just the <laughs> the white eyes, and there's a dragon breath. Just like okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll probably be fine. Um, yeah. So, uh, I guess I just st- start standing my post, start mm-hmm. taking a, some little, few sips of my uh my beer, my road beer. You know. Yeah. While you're while you're hanging out there, roll me a Constitution saving throw. What is that for? What is a Constitution? Um. So you're just gonna throw? roll the d twenty and add whatever your Constitution modifier is. Um. So my cons oh, so my constitution modifier is two plus two. Mm-hmm. Nine. Ooh. So as you're you're kind of sitting there, that that ghost kind of disrupted your sleep a bit there. Yeah. And you're feeling feeling your eyelids getting kind of heavy there. <laughs> feeling a little uh, ooh, little little droopy there. Yeah. Roll me one more. Thirteen. Mm. Yeah, you. We'll say you. You doze off for a little bit there, for a little bit, but not like a deep sleep. Okay. You. You're awoken by the smell of smoke. 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 So, uh, I want I want to investigate and see where the smoke's coming from. And you turn around and you you smell that smoke coming from somewhere within inside the warehouse. Um, so I guess I try to rush in to find the source of it so I can stomp it out as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. So you, you fling, fling open the door, kind of cram yourself in through it and whatnot, and you notice uh, there are only one of you, so we'll do, we'll do four guys in there. Okay. Each of them dressed in just jet black robes. The hood's kind of pulled up over their faces and whatnot. And uh, one of them is trying to, like, Light a fire next to a box of fireworks. Oh, God. Roll me initiative. Wait, so I'm rolling to try to attack them? Nope, you're rolling your position within the combat listing. So you're going to roll a d20. You're going to add your dexterity modifier to it and, I believe, your proficiency. So 8 and then plus 4, so 12. I'm working here, so... Yeah, man. Drake, you said what now? I said uh, I rolled I rolled an eight, but then um, you said it's plus d- d- dexterity plus proficiency bonus. Yes. So that's plus four, so it's twelve. So twelve total, and then dude number one got a fourteen plus his dex is a fifteen. Crap. Dude one, dude two got. 
need three. That's 14 is 15. So I guess what 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 is this right now if it's not for combat? This is combat. So we're going to do like actual combat now, not just you bonking somebody on the head. Okay. I've never experience the the real combat of Dungeons and Dragons. Always going to be fun. Oh, no. I heard there's a lot of math involved. Eh, yes and no. Trigonometry. Oh, trust me. We're not doing any more BS. You know what? I took I took algebra. Um, I basically was taking the same algebra cl- classes that I took in high school, in college. Same. Why? <laughs> I took algebra one again. Cause, cause, in college, because money is my my initial guess. Money, we because because realistically, like, so I was studying Japanese, right? Yeah, I realistically could have gotten that degree in two years, mm-hmm. easy. Yeah, and then just had the the third year that I spent in Japan is like extra bit, right? Yeah, but you know the know, extra stuff. Yeah, like we know we got to make it a four year degree because tradition you know like, I, st- stuff like that doesn't make sense it should be more like a trade system where you're like you're trying to learn what you're trying to learn and you're not gonna like i don't do i need to know algebra if i'm going to school to draw exactly if like, i'm going to school for video you know like, what i mean like like i understand like everybody has to have like a basic understanding of just mathematics in general but when you start getting to like like you said trigonometry algebra and whatnot like yeah sure you might use this but like I'm studying language here. My intention is to yeah. become a teacher, a for, language teacher. Yeah, for language. So, like, yeah. anyway, is, I'll be honest. The subject is going to make me angry. So, I'm sorry. That's, I'm no, sorry. It, no, is, no, it, 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 it pisses me off too. So, no, it, it's fine. It's filling that that dead air as I, I finagle with things. So, ladies and gentlemen, how have you been liking um, the new show? That is a good point. Yeah, I, I've been having fun. I've been having a lot of fun. This has been great, honestly. It's, it's the, the, the one thing I will say, it's a little difficult because I, I'm not always looking at the screen right. to remember to go back and forth, mm-hmm. especially because I have ADHD. Mm-hmm. So I think maybe next time I'll try and see if I can position this somewhere else, like up here. Because mm-hmm. then that way at least I can... I'll be like yeah, it'll be, looking. It'll be, it'll be less of a transition from like here to there. Well, because it, it'll be in my peripheral view yeah, 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 yeah. here at least. It, over here, it's like I'm trying to tell. Yeah, it's like right on the edge of your vision. Yeah. Here, so. All right, he's flirting with himself. Let's kick his butt. <laughs> All right, so. Bring it on, fools. All right. So as, as you, you bust in, you see these four guys. They turn to see you and like, Get him! We can't let him know what we're doing. We can't let him stop us. And and yeah, we start combat. So, starting at the 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 top of our our list here is dude number four, as I will call him. Okay. He's gonna run up to you, and he is going to attempt to smack you with a knife. Like as he's walking up to you, he draws like a little like curved dagger of some kind. He's like, I'm gonna get you. Okay. So he is making a melee attack. That is a 13. That is a 16 to hit. So I have to get at least a 16 no, to so, defend? No, so you're comparing this to your AC number, which is that will be at the top of your uh, your character sheet. I think it was 14. When, when we oh, the the armor? Yeah, the armor class. Uh, it's 14. 14, okay. So he does hit. So so the way it works is you're going to roll the, the D20 to see if you hit, and you're going to compare the number you get from there to the opponent's uh, armor class. Okay. Yeah. I see. So, 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 okay. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, and then if you if you beat their armor class, um, you you do have to beat it. You cannot match it. So if I got a fourteen, it would still count as me failing. But if I got a fifteen, I would still I would still beat it. Yep. So okay, I guess my question here is mm-hmm. me to the DM. Obviously, yes. if I shoot my lightning breath, is it gonna fucking? Oh shit! Is it gonna ignite? <laughs> is it gonna ignite the? The fireworks, or if I only aim towards a certain few people. If you position yourself like parallel to, so like if you're if you're standing here mm-hmm. and the fireworks are over here or something, and you shoot this way, yeah, yes, you won't hit the fireworks. But if you're like you got like guy one and two sitting here, and then you blast into them, yes, you will hit it. So positioning positioning for that will be important. Okay, so keep that in mind. Yes. So, beefy dubs, you're getting hit for. 
four is five damage. Oh no. Don't I only have ten hit hit points? Oh you do, don't you? Ooh. Don't worry. Don't worry, I'm gonna get slaughtered. Don't worry, don't worry. I don't have a team, bro. It's just me. It's fine. It's just me. It's fine. We had two other people that were supposed to be here, guys. Take your hits. And they bailed. Don't worry. They bailed on us. Don't worry, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Game over, man. Game over. No, it's fine. It's fine. Because, see, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to take this dice. I'm going to roll it. Not a great roll. Are you rolling for one of the other guys to attack I right now? I am rolling for help. For help. <laughs> so as as uh, this this next guy comes up, as, as this guy comes up and kind of pokes you real good with his knife or something, like yeah. ah, ooh, you got me my kneecap as I gesture towards my stomach. <laughs> um, you hear the door get kicked open again, and everybody turns like, oh, who is it now? Da, da, da. You, you see uh, uh, another another man come in, a human. Okay. He's wearing, like, Japanese-style robes. He's got a sword, a short sword, and a dagger on his right, on his left hip. And he's got one of those, like, rice picker hats on. And he walk, walks in. It's like, oh, I didn't realize that you had taken on this job, too. It's been a while, my old friend. Oh, my gosh. Salazar. And you, he re- takes off his hat to reveal your old friend, Ling Shen, the samurai. Oh my gosh, I remember him, but I can never remember his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we played with this character um, in one of our old campaigns. Yeah, so it was, since it was just us two back then, I I put in this self insert character, Ling Shen, the samurai, which is fun because they actually have a samurai class in D anD. d So do they? Yeah, it's it's for the uh, the a fighter subclass. Hmm. Which, I I don't have a character sheet for him here because I mean we only found out that nobody else was gonna be here like earlier this morning so yeah. I didn't build a character form just yet but in the future he will have an actual character sheet and whatnot so Sweet. for these exact situations <laughs> so wait what is his name again Ling Shen Ling Shen for some Ling. reason like the the Shen part makes me want to say Egg Shen like from Big Trouble Little China. <laughs> I mean, if that helps you remember, go for it. Like, how'd you get up there? Wasn't easy. <laughs> <laughs> see, um, see things no one else can see. Do things no one else can do. Ah, uh, what a great film! I have not seen that movie in forever. Dude, it's great. Do you do you fantastic. do you like John Carpenter as a director? Probably. I like that movie. So, have you ever seen the thing? No, I haven't. Dude, we it's should really do cool. we should do a podcast episode. Where we watch the thing, and you can like get all of the, like review it as you're watching it. Ah, okay, that'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah. because I, I've heard like on Twitch you can do like a live stream where you just watch a movie on Amazon. Oh, really? Your, with your people? Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, we should we yeah. should we should do that sometime. Maybe. All right. Um. So Ling Shen busts in the door, and I'll be honest. He goes last in the order, so uh, oh no, this will be fun. Um, Wait, you're saying I'm gonna get just decimated before he even gets not, to attack? Not necessarily, not necessarily. I mean, the whole the whole reason he's here is to try and take a bit of a, a bit of a, the heat off of you here. Okay. Egg Shen, save me. L- Ling Shen. Ling Shen, yes. I remember his name now. No, you don't. <laughs> Ling. Right. So, uh, so that was dude number four. That was we'll go to dude number one then. And he's like, "Oh, not another one!" He draws his own knife and he approaches towards Ling Shen. Uh, knife at the ready. He rolls to attack Ling Shen. Ooh. And he hits. <laughs> oh gosh. It's okay. It's only a D six. So this is a fruitless venture. That's... Abandon ship. Abandon ship. <laughs> It's it's like the the guys that were on the Titanic where it's like it was a pleasure it was a pleasure gentlemen and they just keep they playing just keep playing the violin yeah <laughs> oh. oh my gosh all right so Ling Shen takes a hit but tis but a flesh wound tis only a flesh wound tis only a flesh wound and that will be uh, dude number two's turn there we go there we are 
So dude number three is also going to go at Ling Shen. And he's also going to try and give him the old pokey poke. Ooh, not so good on that one. So that's a miss for dude number three. Now it is your turn. Okay. You got a dude standing in front of you, and you got two, like, a little bit of ways behind you fighting Ling Shen. Uh, and number four, number two is still at the crate, kind of. I, can I use the lightning breath? You can, yeah. Like I said, you might want to reposition yourself a little bit there. Well, how would I go about doing that? You say, I want to move this way five feet. And that, yeah. I, I want to position myself so I'm not going to, I'm not going to put, I'm not going to potentially explode the box. Yeah, that, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I will say, since you do have a guy standing next to you, that provokes something called an opportunity attack. So opportunity attacks is whenever somebody is leaving melee range from you, you get to make a free melee attack against them and okay. like kind of swipe at their back as they run away. Okay. So the cultist that was standing in front of you is going to try and do the thing. Is there we are. He, he also hits. You take Three damage. So what am I at? You were at ten total. You get hit for five, and then three. So you're at two. <laughs> ben, four guys. I'm one. I'm a one nine foot tall man, dragon man, all by myself. Yeah. Now with L Ling Shen, he's gonna just get decimated too. You you didn't think this would be easy, did you? I mean, usually you gave me some lean, leniency, well, but... Well, yes, but then it makes combat not so... Um... <laughs> Challenging? Thank you. Uh, so, yes, I will actively be trying to kill you in this campaign. Not You won't die initially, but... I got your number here, buddy. Bro, <laughs> you know what? I'm coming at you with these uh, these D20s. You're not going to you're not gonna be killing anyone, all right? We'll see about that. Why do you want to kill Salazar Spindle? I don't want to kill him. I'm just trying to kill him. Because it makes combat more intense and interesting if you're not just constantly stacking bodies. <laughs> if, if I'm not, you're not just trying to bail me out all the time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, so does, what, what happens with the lightning breath thing? So um, let's look up Le Rules, the official not sponsored D&D &D player's handbook here. Wait, are we going to get... Um... Are we going to get the stuff taken off for us? Like, or not demonetized, but um, oh, like, censored because we're using... I... My my friend Alan had the idea of us uh, of us doing Dungeons and Dragons here. I was going to do it on, t on Tuesdays, but I've been going to... I've uh, been doing concerts on Tuesdays. Right. Um, but his idea was to call it Castles and Lizards instead of Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Nice. Um, I don't know about that one. I mean, a lot of people say they're playing Dungeons and Dragons on their own podcast, so I don't know if there would be an issue with that or not. That's. I guess we'll just we'll we'll, we'll, we'll find out. We'll keep I mean, doing it, and then if if they are like, you can't do it or something, then it'll be yeah. castles and lizards. Castles and lizards. Boards and bros. I that, that'll have my vote there. Boards and bros. Boards and bros. Well, that one could probably be more of like we're playing a board game or something. I think what we should do is like the name of this podcast is the Dude Let's Play It podcast. Mm -hmm. But then like sub segments yes. of the Dude Let's Play It. Yeah, yeah. like this is the, the Boards and Bros segment okay. of. Okay, so uh, when you when you use your breath weapon, each creature in exhalation must make a saving throw, type of which is determined by your draconic ancestry. You are blue for lightning. You were doing it in the. Okay, so you're doing it in a 5 by 30 line. So these, so each of the guys caught in the blast will have to make a DC saving throw equal to 8, plus your constitution modifier, plus your proficiency bonus. So 8 plus your con modifier, which I believe is 2. Um, My constitution modifier is, yeah, it's 2. 2 plus your proficiency bonus, which is 4. So that is 12. So they must make a 12 saving throw for Constitution, or they will be... Zapped out of existence? Perhaps. Uh, let's see. Does 2d6 damage 
on a hit and half as much on a miss. Okay, so either way, you're still going to do a bit of damage here. So, starting with our saving throw of Constitution. Ooh. Yeah, he passed. But he still he, takes he still takes damage, so roll two D6s. D's. Then, yeah, the, the oh. standard cube playing dice. So two of those. Uh I have five all together. Five all together, then cut it in half, and I think it's usually rounding down to two. Okay. So hit that guy. How much health do these guys have? I can't tell you that. That'd be cheating. That'd be cheating. I will say I'm nerfing them a little bit here. <laughs> so you you zap the, the one guy. Pretty freaking good. He's not looking too hot here. So I only got one guy, though? Yes, only one guy, because it is a stream, and the other guy's he's a little bit too far away for it. So. Bro, I'm about to be killed off right now. It's fine. It's fine. If Don't make me make another character, because I don't want to do it. So that was... That was... Let me check, see what kind of action that is. So that's another thing I should mention. So... Uh, your turn consists of three possible actions. You have your movement, okay. which you can take in parts. So you moved like so you moved like five feet to get in position for your dragon's breath. You still have the other twenty five that you can take uh, to move as you so deem fit. You then have your normal action, which would be like attacks, casting spells, stuff like that. And then you have a bonus action, which um, can be an attack, can be a skill of some kind. Usually, whatever ability you're trying to use will say if it's a bonus action or an action or something like that. Yeah. Um, for your draconic breath, for your breath weapon, you can use your your action. So, so your breath weapon was your your main action there. Um, that was your 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 big attack for turn. So now my turn's over. Not necessarily. You can move around if you so desire. Can I move far enough away where they can attack me? And then do do a ranged attack with my sling that's in my inventory. Um, unfortunately, you can't do the sling. Um, that would count as another action. Well, I mean, like, um, in another turn. In another turn, yes, um, you'll be able to to attack again or whatnot. But for this particular rotation, um, you will not be able to use anything that counts as an action. And I'm trying to pull up monks here to see if you have perhaps a bonus action of some kind that you can. If I can, here we are. If I can find the friggin' thing in Bob. So, uh, do tranquil d3 damage. I'll focus. Okay. So, um, unfortunately for now, I don't think you have anything else that you can do. I will say, though, um, because you are a monk, uh, you basically make, like, two attacks for the price of one. Nice. Yeah, so when you use the attack action with an unarmed strike or a monk weapon on your turn, you can make one unarmed strike as a bonus action. Um, I guess not necessarily price of one, but... So can I try to... Can I try to... Um, on, on this turn, unfortunately, no, because you used your breath weapon. Okay. And that took up your main action. But next turn, if you decide well, if you decide to, like, punch or kick somebody as your main action, yeah. you then use your bonus action to basically hit them again. How many spaces can I move away from um, them? So you have a, a max speed of 30 feet. Okay. Um, we usually play it in chunks of five. Like, if we were playing um, on a map of some kind, usually they are a, a one-inch square grid. Yeah. And each square is five feet. Um, so... I'll say you moved like, we'll call it like five feet to kind of get out of range of the one guy and position yourself to lash the other guy. So you do have another like 25 feet that you can move around with if you want to like do something with it, run, a, run to the other side of the warehouse, climb a wall or something like that. Um, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I, I guess I, I want to move as far away as possible. Okay. Um, Just uh, more towards my friend. Towards uh, Lin, Shen? Lin Shen. Okay, yeah, that works perfectly actually. So you move, um, you're about five feet away from Ling Shen. So okay. you, like Ling is still by the door. You're kind of like over here. Yeah. And then Ling has like two guys in front of him. He's got the one, the one guy kind of off to one side. And then you kind of scuttle away from the other guy. So you're, you're out of immediate range. They'll have to walk up and kind of give you another poke. Yeah. Um, so now it is dude's 
two's turn. He's not looking too good. Um, this is the guy I hit with the breath? This is the guy you hit with the breath. Um, despite his bad shape, he's going to attempt to try and continue lighting the fireworks. And he'll just do a simple skill roll. I would do survival, and I think that's a wisdom. So, okay. Uh, and he fails. So the fireworks have not been lit. Okay. Which, hopefully that's good. <laughs> oh, no. Um, we'll say he'll just stay there for now. He's, he's going to kind of He'll let his his buddies try to distract you guys. Can you can you roll for other stuff like some of the other skill checks during combat, or is that not? You can. Um, de- depending on like the the complexity of the action, it might use your action or your bonus action. Yeah. For this one, since it's a it's a fairly small thing, he's just trying to like strike a tinderbox. Um, he'll probably just use his bonus action to do a skill roll for that. Yeah. Whereas if he wanted to like get up and try and stab you, that would use his action. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so then it's actually Ling Shen's turn. Okay. Yeah. Let me scoot on down towards his bit here. Okay. So he he using this uh, bracket here to just kind of paste him over. He gets to make two attacks. So he's gonna swing at one cultist standing in front of him. Making fourteen. That is just enough. Yeah, he smacks that guy real good. Sweet. Yeah. And he's doing... Ooh. It's a big hit here. 2d6 is 8 plus 2. Oh, so he just straight up cuts a guy in half. So Damn. He kind of like you see in the samurai movies. He like draws and cuts at the same time. Yeah. So as the one as the one cultist is coming towards him, he's like, whoosh Cuts him in half. He's... Anime style blood spewing everywhere. He brings his sword back up and slashes at the next guy that comes in right behind him here. He's gonna do the same thing. Ooh and yeah. Oh yeah. Hit some. Nice. Four. Oh yeah, that's dead. That is two guys dead. Nice. In one go. Thank hey. thank God. Link Shed. Just I which, I'm just getting my, my friggin' butt kicked in right now. You seem to be rusty, Salazar san been a while hasn't it yeah i stopped being a pirate and became a monk ah that will do it well there'll be more time for later in the meantime i got behind you no <laughs> so, dude number four he's gonna come up he's gonna try and poke you in the kneecap again okay let's see what happens here yeah that is ooh. It's a, it's a 19 on dice there. He, he slaps you real good. So am I, am I dead yet? Well, we're about to find out here. Ooh, yeah. That's a six on dice there. So Bro, what the heck, he, man? You're like, ah, oh, oh, Ling Shen, it's great to see you again. And then you just kind of get stabbed in the back of the kneecap. <laughs> you just, ah. So. It's like, it's, like a, it's like a building falling down when Salazar falls down. <laughs> Boodoos. <laughs> <laughs> just clouds of dust booming everywhere. <laughs> just you see you kind of like crumpled there. Oh my gosh. Okay. So the way the way um going down works in D and D. So you're not you're not initially dead. Okay. So in your subsequent turns uh, during combat, you're gonna make what are called death saving throws, and these are basically you just roll a d20. If you roll a ten or above, you succeed. If you roll ten or below. Or if you roll below 10, you fail. Okay. And if you fail three times, you're dead. And you won't bring me back. Well, maybe. Bro, come on. Maybe. <laughs> you used to be a nice DM, and now you're... Then I then I, I learned a thing or two. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Yes. So, so give me the, I'm, I'm rolling um, a 20? Your next turn. Your next turn. Okay. So that was... Dude, so I'm just rolling to see if I'm just rolling to see that, that I don't die. I'm not rolling to combat or anything. Yes, this is basically just like your spirit, like staying in your body before you pass on or something like. Jeez. Which I mean, you got stabbed in the knee. You'll you'll be fine. Um, actually, it is your turn now. That was that was dude number four that stabbed you in the back of the knee. So, okay. Roll me a d20 there. 
Eight. <laughs> That's one failure. Oh my gosh! What do I have to get? You have to get ten or above. Ten. Or... It's a fifty-fifty chance. So do I roll each ter- each time it's my turn? Each time it's your turn. Yes. Okay. It. This is normal. Trust me. So, dude number two, he's gonna make another uh, attempt to light the fireworks. Who and he fails. That's just like. <laughs> Uh, he's kind of like partially paralyzed because he did get struck by lightning, basically. So. He's like he's like trying to rub two sticks together. <laughs> oh, they didn't tell us there'd be a nine foot tall dragon board. <laughs> and the samurai that's just cutting down all the men. <laughs> and then there's a random freaking samurai here. They said they're freaking Miyamoto Musashi here. I'm not getting a paid enough for this. <laughs> oh. Okay, so that was dude number two. So now it's Ling Shen's turn. He's like, oh, Salazar, <laughs> it's good to see you again, my friend. And he steps up to And then he gets stabbed in the kneecaps, too. <laughs> he's, he's stabbed in the neck. He's just, no, um, he'll step up, <laughs> he'll step up to dude number two and try to, try to kill him. <laughs> oh, yeah, he gets dude number two easy. All right. That is, oh yeah, dude Dude number four is dead. Just walks up, he's like, oh, Salazar, and he cuts the guy's head off. Oh just... my gosh. <laughs> oh man. All right. Wait, so how many guys are left? One? It's, it's just the one guy left. Yeah, the guy at the crates. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so that was Ling's. Now it's back to you here. We are still in combat, so roll that d20. Bro. What would you get? I got a three. Ah. <laughs> I feel like I feel like in Call of Duty when you're down and you, mm-hmm. you, you as soon as you go down, you're like, I'm down, help me out. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you're, you're just like last stand mode there yeah, with like two clips for your pistol. It's like do I take the coward's way out or do I do ah. I wait and see if someone revives me? I, yeah, I don't know. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. You're gonna have to give me a whole uh, make-believe team here because uh, <laughs> of all NPC. Nah, it'll be fine. Ling, Ling, Ling's got you back there. He'll, he'll cover for you. I hope so. <laughs> He's got you. He's got you. So, um, so Ling is. Uh, let's see here. Uh, all right. Yeah. Well, what is he? Uh, all right. So Ling, he he's like, oh, gotta save Salazar. He's Bleeding from his kneecaps, but I also got to stop that guy. So he's going to pull out his dagger there. And I forgot to mention this before, but you notice, um, retroactively, you notice when he drew his sword, his, like, his main long sword, yeah. you notice it's got, a, it's got a very particular like glowy white shine to it. Like nor- normally, like, you, you know, for like theatrical purposes, like light would be gleaming off of a, like a, a dude's blade or something like yeah. that. This one's like particularly shiny, even though you're like, inside a warehouse and there's no like sunlight lining on it Mm -hmm. same thing with his dagger too although his dagger is not as um uh bright and shiny as his sword was so he pulls out his dagger and he's going to throw it at the uh the final guy there let's see how that goes just barely makes it too does that so is this guy dead now? Or probably. Is I mean I will roll damage just in case. Damn. Oh yeah, he's dead. Man, I wanted to I wanted to like question one of them, but now there's none left. <laughs> <laughs> now I just have to investigate. If if I'm even still alive after this, this might become the the Ling Shen show. You'll be fine. So Ling Ling Shen pulls out his dagger, just kind of like Naruto or something like that, and just stabs the guy in the back, just ah and he crumples to the floor. Wait, do you remember watching The Whitest Kids You Know and it's the Civil War on Drugs? Oh, yeah, yeah. And they, they're, the the in, the Native Americans are like, they shoot the, 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 the horse creature thing. Like, all the mailmen come out of the fake. They're, they're like, 
they keep seeing like a horse running around <laughs> and then it's actually like the mailmen that are running around that's like how they they go behind enemy lines and stuff oh and they're like all really flamboyant and they're like we're here to bring you the mail and all this <laughs> and then the native americans come and they like they shoot them or whatever and they're all they all get hit and then when when darren uh gets hit he gets hit and he goes <laughs> I don't remember that. It's been ages since I last saw ah, that. I can't even replicate it. It's it's hilarious. Ah. It's like it's like the little. It's like he gets you hear you hear <laughs> boom, and then it's just. Ah. <laughs> oh man, I haven't, I haven't thought about why does kids know in ages. <laughs> did, did you know that the Did you know Trevor Moore died? Did he really? Yeah, he oh. fell out of a window. That's how he died. Yes. He was really drunk after a live stream because they started doing live streams for like uh-huh. a year or two. Um, and he fell out of the window like 20 minutes or 30 minutes after a live stream and he died. Is that not insane? That's, that's very fitting, honestly. Like, it just with, – with his style of comedy and whatnot, like – You should have seen their live stream. They were like – they were making jokes about it and stuff, but you could tell that they were like really like sad that they're – one of their best friends was gone. I bet, yeah. You know? But, yeah. Trevor Moore, rip in peace. One of my favorite, one of my most favorite comedians of all time. He's pretty good. I love his just crazy humor. Mm-hmm. It's totally my style. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So, combat is done. Uh, Ling Shen pulls out some bandages, starts wrapping up your knees and whatnot. She's able to stop the bleeding, so you you are stable. You won't you won't die. It's Okay. Stop panicking. Nobody's right. panicking. Nobody's panicking. We'll say, um, so we'll bump you back up to one HP. Um, okay. Just for now. And then we'll we'll get you fully healed up and whatnot later. Um Okay, so combat is done. Ling Shen is here. He's like, Hey, what's up, buddy? You do the the, the predator scene where you just like you know, muscle arms, you're like, ah, come on. Ah, uh, you've been uh, pushing too many wait, can pencils. We, can, there, we, can, we, you? can we reach each other from here? Yeah. Uh, uh, you've been pushing too many pencils there, haven't you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dylan, you son of a witch. <laughs> <laughs> the PG version. PG. It's not, it's not only PG, but it also fits the setting. I don't know. We can call this PG 13, can't we? Yeah, yeah. PG 13 yeah. works. PG 13. Yeah. Remember, kids, be 13 years or older. Or you, you're not allowed to watch the stream. Unless. This will probably be shown after 10 p.m. Unless your parents aren't home. In this which is case, this is an Adult Swim type of show, okay? Only showed at Adult Swim type hours. What's the like the anime version of Adult Swim? That's what I want to be on. Um, Didn't they used to show anime at, like? Oh, you talking about Tsunami? That one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's us. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Tsunami was great. Oh man. Do you like Bleach? I eh, kind of. I, a lot of anime people don't like Bleach for some reason. I started getting into it a it's, little bit ago. It's got a lot of interesting stuff to it, but like I know I, it's I, like I tried really watching long. the anime. It is there is so much just three or four. It's kind of like with Dragon Ball that I don't like. It's just nothing happens in an episode. Yeah, like I remember one episode in particular. Like they're doing like a character's background in the middle of a fight. Like it's oh, they're, they're just like flashbacks a, a big fight flashbacks. or something like that. And he's just like he sits there for like three episodes, like just having a flashback to like when he was like ten years old and he like tried to help a kitten out of a tree or something. It's like, bro, <laughs> focus. <laughs> you have a literal grim reaper over there cutting people in half. Dude, you know it'd be funny if we made an animation where it was like. You know, he was just thinking, and it's just like him thinking and thinking, kind of like the the one, um, the Sasuke, or the Naruto anime thing that I sent you that I made. Mm-hmm. And he's like just talking to himself, and then the creature just you just see a, like a giant tentacle just smack him down to the ground or something. Him. Yeah, yeah. Like that, that's another reason why I can't get into Dragon Ball. It's just like ten episodes straight of just charging up your ultimate attack just uh, for it to miss. I'm like, uh, this this <sighs> is a Super Saiyan. This is, and we'll just call this a Super Saiyan too, and this is to go further beyond. <laughs> uh, and it's just five episodes of just. Uh, <laughs> I, I love those those ten hour the ten hour things where it's just Goku and he's just for ten hours it's just like just he's, he's saying whatever he's saying and it's just uh, for the entire freaking ten hours. Have you ever tried to do a ten hour challenge before? 
Wait, will you like sit there and watch a, a ten hour movie? No, yes, because I don't hate myself that much. I so sometimes like if I'm trying to get something done, but this is more so when I was still in school and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I would turn on. Um, have you seen the? I think it's War it's War Warcraft for Life episode of South Park. No. So it's in my opinion, it should at least be top five South Park episodes of all time. Like mm-hmm. that's how. Um, it's like a 10 out of 10 episode. Nice. And a, a lot of them are pretty high up there, but they're like the straight 10 out of 10 episodes. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. there's like that, the the um, the one where he feeds the guy his parents in Chile or whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, I'm sorry, what was I just saying? Oh, um, in the episode. Okay, so, sorry for the awkward pause there, ladies and gentlemen. The uh, recording... Reached its time limit while we were in like mid sentence. So it's if there's not, a weird pause, that's why. It timed out, everyone. Yeah, but we are back. We're gonna finish up this here little session we did. So, uh, so we just finished up combat. Uh, Drake got absolutely bodied, but it's okay because Ling Shen, the samurai, came in to save him, as he usually does. Did, so, did you you really meant for me to get bodied? Yes you, and no. <laughs> like, damn, bro. I forgot that you only had 10 HP. <laughs> you're like, oh, I'm going to really mess with him. And then you're like, oh, he's 10 well, like, HP. Well, like, so the first attack was like five, was like four on dice. And then he got a plus one to his attack. So it's five. And then I was like, oh, that's not too bad. Oh, wait, he's only got 10 HP. So like that almost killed him. <laughs> Damn. But then, but yeah, originally uh, Ling Shen wasn't going to show up until later. Oh, so, so. You're, you're like, oh, I got to save him. I, I, oh. <laughs> I'm 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 glad I thought about Ling Shen earlier today because like I was thinking like oh we'll maybe meet him like later down the line or something like that yeah and it'll be like oh hey you remember me and it'll be like oh but and you got almost killed on the first turn so <laughs> thankfully uh, damn it Ben thankfully these guys don't make multi attacks like Ling Shen does yeah otherwise uh, <laughs> you might have gotten poked pretty bad in the kneecap oh no. <laughs> Or that it's like it's like Yoda with his at- Ataru, where he like jumps around and he's like making all his noises. Exactly, yeah, yeah. What I I don't remember his no- I don't remember the Emperor's noises. Yeah, like that is his yell. Unlimited power. <laughs> no, but you know what I'm talking about, where he has like the he has the the lightsaber, and yeah, and is he, like it, does a fucking barrel. So it's treason then. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, those movies are both a, a blessing and a curse. <laughs> Anywho, so, so many memes. There's apparently a drinking game now where you just watch the the prequel series and then drink whenever you see a meme. <laughs> oh god, I'd be hammered, dog. <laughs> Especially episode three. Oh man, episode three had so many good ones. I'd have to like have like a bingo board or something off to the side to like remind me of all the memes. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's get back into this here. So, uh, so Ling Shen, he bandages up your kneecaps. He stops the bleeding and whatnot. And you're back. We'll put you back up to one HP. Okay. So you're not dead. You're not actively dying. Uh, but you might want to get fixed wanna, up. I want to take a break a little bit later. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Um. So Ling Ling Shen is like, uh, you okay? You okay, buddy? Uh, yeah. I th- I think I'll be all right. All right, good. Feeling not the greatest at the moment. I can imagine. You did get stabbed in the kneecap several times. Thanks for coming in clutch, homie. Mm-hmm. It's, it's good to see you again, my old friend. It's good to see you, too. It's been a, it's been a long time. It's been a hot minute. Yes. That's for sure. I, I assume you hear about the, uh, the the mayor's job offer here, and he holds up a copy of the flyer. Yeah, yeah. Nah, yes. Should have known. Did Did you look into the... Crab cult as well? No, I only arrived in town just a couple hours ago. I was conversing with the mayor. I happened to meet him on the way way into town here as he was making his way towards his home. And well, turns out he was the mayor. And he gave me the job and said he had somebody else already on the job. So I came down to introduce myself. And then, well, I found you in this precarious situation here. Damn. Yes. The fates have uh, smiled upon us today. Yeah, definitely smiled on me. I was I was about to get uh maybe more murdered. smirked, but you know, whatever. <laughs> As I'm like still bleeding. <laughs> yes. I like look down and there's like like some of my guts in my hand. Oh, that's not supposed to be there. That uh should not be possible, but okay. 
<laughs> oh, because my knees got attacked? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That was the ongoing joke. I, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. Uh, I'm holding well, my leg. Perhaps we should take uh, a look at these fellows here. You mentioned a crab cult. Are these them? Or? Uh, I don't know. Let's investigate. Investigate. So you look over the bodies here, and um, they, they are wearing, like, each and one of them is wearing, like, the exact same just jet black robe. Okay. Um, and as you're kind of, like, rifling through their pockets and whatnot, you don't find anything. Not coins, no identifiers of anything. Just nothing. Okay. Yeah. And then you notice, like, the, the box of fireworks that they were trying to strike at. It's got a little bit of burnt bits and whatnot, but it's not going to go off anytime soon here. So. Um, do, can I see if I recognize their faces? Yeah, sure. Um, roll me a history to see if you kind of like remember anybody on here. 20. 20? Oh, dang. And, so, and I have proficiency in history. Oh, yeah. yeah, so you, you, you look over the four bodies and whatnot, and you're like, yeah, n- nope. No, nothing like you've got crystal clear memory of every person you've met today, and these four were none of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yes. So I'm guessing that the the crab cult is probably definitely like not like they're probably like they're not it or whatever. That definitely wasn't them. I'm assuming. So, um, I guess should I'm talking a lot. Li- uh, what is his name? Ling Shen. I'm, ta- <laughs> I'm talking to Ling Shen again, mm-hmm. or right now, and I'm like, sh- do you think we should, um, do you think we should go report this to the mayor? Hmm. The mayor seemed very nonchalant about a potential threat, so I imagine he's probably already turned in for the night. Might be best to just report to him in the morning. I mean, the the warehouse does not seem to be any particular threat now. Well, do you think uh, do you think you can stay here while I? Go find some medical attention. I suppose yes. That if, if you feel that's necessary, I will stay here and protect the warehouse. All right, I'm going back to was it Bony Bills? Bony Bills bed and breakfast. I'm going to go back to Bony Bills and see if uh, him or Larry or one of those ghost people can mm-hmm. patch me up or something. Okay, rest easy, my friend. I'll try. So you make your way to Bony Bills. Um, you, uh, do you follow the instructions? Yeah, well then, the t- take three rights or four <laughs> rights or whatever. That how many rights you're supposed to take? Uh, okay. So, so yes, you 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 follow the instructions and you find Bony Bills, and Bill is just still standing there behind the bar and he sees you walk in. And he's like, ooh, and he pulls out like a, a ratty old bag that has a first aid kit in it. Yeah. He's like, you know, he kind of waves you over to the bar and whatnot. And so I, so I, um. The, so does he is he able to heal me? Yeah, he'll he'll heal you up and whatnot. And uh, so so for some, one of the most common ways of healing is to just simply take a rest. Um, there are two types of rests. So there's a short rest which lasts for about an hour. Mm-hmm. Um, in this one, uh, in a short rest, you'll roll what's called a hit dice, um, which will be marked in under your your class information in the uh, PHB. Okay. Um, so essentially, how that works is you'll roll whatever that particular dice is that it tells you. Add your constitution modifier, and that's how many hit points you regenerate during that short rest. Hmm. Um, so th- th- that's used for like, oh, we making our way through like a particularly long dungeon or something. We find, you know, a bonfire checkpoint kind of thing. Yeah. Everybody take a break, catch your breath, heal up, patch yourself up, and then we'll keep going. Um, now, usually when like you're done with the main dungeon, you'll take what's called a long rest. This is usually an eight hour um, period of rest. This is usually when people like. They'll sleep, they'll maybe prep a meal or something like that. They'll do downtime of some kind. And during that, they'll heal up all the way back up to full HP. Okay. So what we're going to have you do is a, a long rest here. Won't be exactly in eight hours, but it'll function basically the same. Um, so you know, you'll know, you go back up to full HP. You'll get all of your, your skills and whatnot. will reset and whatnot for the next combat. All right. Uh, for when you, when you decide to use them. Um, so, yeah, you wake up. Um, I guess what would you say, you, you know, Bony Bill was able to kind of struggle his way up the stairs while dragging you up them to get you back to your room. You wake up feeling more or less rested. Your knees have uh, stopped bleeding and whatnot. There might be a small scar, but yeah, you're pretty well traveled. It'll just blend in with the rest of the scars. <laughs> blend in with all my scales. All, all the other times you've been stabbed in the knees because you're nine feet tall. 
the rest of my body is like impeccable. Like nothing else just is like cut perfectly up. Perfectly baby skin smooth. But then there's then, your legs. Then my like legs. your legs, like your knees and your shins. Just <laughs> damn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, you wake up the next morning. Birds are birds are cawing because there's only like crows in the immediate vicinity because you know haunted mansion. Yeah. But yeah. It is now morning. Okay. Cool. Um. So I guess I run over to wherever. Where, where are we at? We, we're at Bunny Bills. You're just gonna go to the. Yeah. The, the mayor? No, where's the 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 warehouse that we were at? Yeah, the warehouse. I want to run over to the w- warehouse and uh, see what's up with um Lang Lang Shen. Ling. Ling Shen. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I'll get it eventually. No, you won't. Come on. I <laughs> won't. <laughs> All right. So you you Naruto run your way across the rooftops to Ling Shen. I don't know if I can even show this right here. Running round at the speed of sound. Do, 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 do. All right. Um. So like five minutes later, you're back at the warehouse. You see Ling Shen coming coming around the corner, um, just off of like his hourly patrol, and he's like, "Ah, good morning. How did you sleep last night?" Uh, good, well rested. Yes, you, ready. Seem, you seem to be doing much better than you were last night. So I'm that is good. Ready for action. Ah, good. Ready to uncover who did this. Well, perhaps we should report to the mayor first. Good idea. Smart one. Yeah, you both make your way to the back to the uh, town hall. There we go. Um, you see the the secretary. There we go. I'm falling asleep, aren't I? <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, just go on up. The mayor will be expecting you. And head on upstairs, and you find the mayor's office. And like, oh, gentlemen, well, come in, come in. How did last night go? Uh, so there was uh, an attack. There was uh four. There was four attackers that were trying to light some boxes of fireworks in the warehouse. Really? That's rather strange. What, what were these men? Who were they? What, what? I'm I'm not sure. I I thought maybe, you know, I thought maybe at first that it was members of uh, the crab cult, but it, they weren't apparently. Hmm. I have a really good memory. Okay, so I would know. Okay then. Um. That's- but yeah, hmm. the fact of the matter is, uh, there's probably more of these guys around here somewhere, maybe hanging out in some type of den. You know, we're hmm. gonna have to bust them. That's rather strange. Were they, were they wearing like robes or something? Like, were they another cult, perhaps? Like, what? what? I, I can't remember what, what were they wearing again. They're just plain jet black robes. Where they were all like identical. Oh, uh, they were wearing jet black robes. Black. Maybe some other type of cult. I'm not sure. Oh, maybe. I haven't heard of any new cult forming up around here. Hmm. Well, perhaps uh, Father Barnabas, Barnabas Cain, the, the leader of the cult, might know of another cult perhaps in the area. I've, I, I've never heard of a cult hmm. dressed in all black. And I mean, certainly some of the crab cult might have black robes, but, you know, they're, they're rather shabby fellows out there. Barnabas Kane happens to be a very good friend of mine, so I think really? I think me and uh Egg Shen over here will pay <laughs> will pay uh will pay uh Barnabas uh Kane a visit, I think. Sounds like a good plan. And in the meantime I'll see if I can maybe find more rumors of a, another cult of some kind. If they're going around just trying to set things on fire, we'll Goodness knows what what'll, this will do to the, the festival here. Ugh, goodness gracious, more work to be done. But, oh well, public service, am I right, gentlemen? <laughs> <laughs> and Ling Shen just kind of smiles at him. I, in my mind, it's still just like the anime thing. Like, they're both just standing there with the, the white, the blank <laughs> eyes. <laughs> and he's just like, oh my. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Maybe, maybe not, a, maybe not a, a humor kind of person. All business, I can respect that. Right, well, I'll I'll leave you gentlemen to uh, the business with the cult, and um, we'll, we'll reconvene later if I can find anything else for you. In the meantime, uh, talk with Father Barnabas Kane. He, I'm sure he'll he'll have some good information here. I'm told they're holding a, some kind of ceremony down in their sanctuary today, so perhaps something enlightening will happen there. Okay. Good day. I think that actually might be a good point to stop here. Okay.
Yeah, and then we'll yeah. pick up with the ceremony in the next session. All right. I I, I like uh, I like having it where I'm anticipating and like excited for the next thing that's going to happen. So Fabulous. I, I think it's. I gonna... will say I'm looking forward to the ceremony too. I think this will be another ridiculous segment <laughs> here. It'll be particularly more funny. more crab people jokes. More crab. It, yes. You know, have you seen? If you know this in South Park, how there's the crab people. No. So it's the whole joke. It's like there's a there's the first episode where the crab people are in. Mm -hmm. There's like all the straight men in South Park are becoming like metrosexual and they're like dressing. <laughs> they're dressing like um, more flamboyant and stuff. Okay. And uh, all the um, they like what it's all from like this particular TV show. And then all the moms from South Park go to where they're like filming this TV show, and all the people. Um, they like rip out of their skins, and it's crab people, and then like the whole, the whole joke, the whole joke is like crab people. That's all they, they they keep saying that all the time, and like when they talk, it's like yeah, we are the crab people. We're here to take over the earth. I can assure you, I have and, never seen that episode before, so there is no relation. <laughs> any and any similarities between the two are completely <laughs> coincidental. Um, well, and, and then in the episode, Kyle's like, they're like, "Oh, we're gonna we're gonna turn you into a crab person," crab. and they just it's like it's playing like music, like they're taking him on like a a makeup. Like, or like a to like like give him a makeover, right. and it's literally they just take like red paint and they paint his face red, and they put like the claws like you're talking about for the cult members on him, and the whole time like imagine that like that music playing uh, like it's a TLC show or something, mm -hmm. and it's just going crap people crab in the background, people, crab people. yeah, <laughs> it's hilarious. But yeah, this uh, this is a very good first I, session. I'm having a lot of fun with this. This is. It's pretty entertaining. This is going better than I thought it would. And we can um, we can drop more people in here at any time. We'll, so hopefully we'll be able to get some guest stars coming in every once in a while. Maybe drop in, drop out. You know, hopefully help Drake not get his ass kicked. For sure. Yeah. I uh, I got my my uh, stuff stomped in today. But it, it's okay. Like you you live and you learned a thing or two. Yep. Which BT Dubs. Uh, Read more about your character sheet. <laughs> Read more about your character. <laughs> Damn. I will have to keep that in mind for the next episode. But, um, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, do, we, do we do like an official outro? Like, yeah, yeah. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have been Dude Let's Play It. My name is Ben, and that is my co-host, Drake. Say goodbye, Drake. Goodbye, Drake. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for watching us. This has been our first episode in this hopefully long-running series. I've got a lot of stuff prepped for this campaign. I know Drake's looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. And I hope you're looking forward to it as well. Until next time, we've been Dude Let's Play It. Say goodbye, Drake. Goodbye, Drake. Goodbye, ladies and gentlemen. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Have a fantastic day. <laughs>